Hello, everyone. Hi, guys. Hello, hello, hello. We got lots of you here. Exciting. Yes. It looks like Cheryl. Hi, Cheryl. Sophia. Hello, Sophia. Leanna's here. Nancy. Hello, Nancy. Shayla. Hello, Shayla. She's one of our new people. I'm so happy. Oh, to Shayla's the, the new Shayla K. Okay. Yeah. I assume. Maybe yeah. not. Maybe I'm making assumptions, but yeah. Hello, Hannah. Hi. Are you, at the, are you at the your book sale, your library book sale? Hello, Cajun Peach. Hello, Nancy. I think I've said hello. Hello, mm -hmm. Dreamin'. Ah, she's saying it just a dream. Oh, yeah, she did change it. Dream. Okay, I'm sorry. Hello, Susan G. Ah. So, um, I'm really excited to talk about these, these books tonight. So, not only is it exciting books, it's the last knockout, and we're going to vote for the whole four months. This has been going on for four months, so it's the, the final night. And how many of you guys in the chat read either one book or both books? Yes. So I will tell you this by far to me was the best month mm -hmm. between and it's, like combining yeah. both books for me that the, these two were the most enjoyable out uh, together anyways, as a month yeah. than any other knockout. To what's, me. what's funny is I said to myself, if these books were put against any other books, I think they'd both win in different categories. Like I think these could books could both be winners. So the fact that they're put against each other and we have to choose one is even harder. It because, is. Because let's say we had a pet round or a, a, a thrift store round, like, you know, Cad Caboodle could have won. A wild card, if this Murder at the PTA was put against something else, it could win. So they're both together. And this was the month I was looking forward to the most just book-wise, and it happened to be my favorite too. Hannah said, no, they're sold out oh. of all the books. I bought, ooh, I bought some cozies go. on thrift books. Tell us what cozies you bought. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, Lee. Hey, Lee. Um, Leanna said she read both. Nice. Cheryl said she read both. Hannah read both. Susan G read both. Dream said she read one of them. Dream, which one did you read? I think you read Murder at the PTA, but I can't swear to that. Yay. Cheryl said, Hello. Hello, hello, nice. I know Storm read both, but she might be cooking dinner right now. Hopefully, we see her. Um, fun. So, Cozy and I were talking, and we thought we'd start with talk. Yes, okay. So, Dreamlet okay. read Murray PT. We thought we'd start with the whole cat caboodle and discuss yeah. that. And end with the with the other one. Um, do we want to start with ratings for both of them, though? We we've been doing mm -hmm. that with both at once, but then that lets you know which one you like better right away. True. Even though people can guess which one I like better. Let's just start with discussing the cop <laughs> Okay. Yeah, um, and see, that's the for, thing is like on I took. On Whole Cat and Caboodle, I tried to break it down by the cop pile. And then in the other book, I got so distracted that I didn't even break it down that way. So I'm going to have to think of it that way. But I'm going to have a lot to say about Murder at the PTA. So we're going to go off cop pile just so, you know. There's a lot in Murder at the PTA. <laughs> All right. So, and I, But I want to start off by saying I'm not biased because it's Lee Hollis and I've read 13 books by him. I went in not knowing what to expect because it's a different story series. And I didn't get traditional Lee Hollis. So this is nothing like Haley Powell. So... I can't be biased. Yes. You <laughs> I are right. I would have enjoyed it if it was written by any author. So, yeah, it's nothing like Haley Powell, and I don't. And and Desert Flower is completely different. Yeah, I was gonna ask because um, Storm Storm asked me. She goes, "Is this like the series you love?" I'm like, "No, it's nothing like Haley Powell." Because <laughs> this was a lot of people's first Lee Hollis book. So if they didn't, oh, enjoy, if they didn't. If they didn't enjoy it, I don't want them to get turned off of Haley Powell. And if they expect this level of book. For Haley Powell, I don't want him to be disappointed either. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay. the um, oh, Hannah said she bought some of the cozies that you recommended, awesome, and then some that were on her TBR. Um, Amazing. When you get when you get your books in the mail, you can put them on our book haul channel on Discord, and we could see what you got. Yeah, 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 yeah. I probably will read both at some point, but just couldn't fit them in at this time. But I'm interested to listen. Okay. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. All right. So the whole cat and caboodle. 
characters, right? That's the first, that's the C. So characters. do you want to do, do you want to do rating first or do you want to do it after? Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Let's do rating for um, the whole cat and caboodle. I, I'm teetering on 4.5. So I'll say, I'll say four, but okay. I'm teetering to between a four and a 4.5. And I gave it a four, solid four. I don't think I would teeter either way. Okay. It was very enjoyable, but it wasn't a five star for me. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I would teeter towards a 4.5. You know, sometimes it's just more you talk about it, the more you think about and things. I like, do oh. wish, I do wish I would have started with this book first. So Cheryl said she gave it a 4.5. Um, Susan G said she gave it a 4.5. Some went with four. Yeah. And Leanna said 3.5. Okay. Leanna said three. Okay, I see it. Um, so start with characters. The problem is I feel like I was so invested in Murder at the PTA. I don't remember as much about this did, one. Did you do Murder at the PTA first? I did, but I, I was did, so I blown, Like, all right. So it's because we, we didn't know what to expect. So we wanted to get that out of the way first. And that's what I did. I'm like, I don't know what this is going to be. I'm going to get out of the way first. And I wish I would have went with Cat and Caboodle because now it's like, Anyways, okay. So my problem with characters on Cat and Caboodle, I like the characters. Um, Elvis the cat, of course, was great. Um, I like that he would like talk to you and he was uh, human-like in his things and he would follow her around and how he was a stray cat and she adopted him. And then Sarah, the main character, um, I enjoyed her. I liked all the grandma's friends. Yeah. Uh, my only problem with is there was so many characters that I felt I didn't get a chance to connect to them. So I need to connect to continue the series to get a connection to them. But I did enjoy them like as an introduction, but there, I didn't like flat out fall in love with the characters in the first book. Um, so I need to read more to fill that connection. Cause there was a lot of them. There, there was. And um, I'm wondering if there would have been a more solid connection to grandma's friends, the Sh Charlotte's Angels, which is hilarious. If grandma would have been more of a, in the picture, she was like yeah. away. On her yeah, um, I'm know. curious. Is she is she going to come back in number two? Like, is it just going to be the like? I hope so. Well, because she, at some point, Sarah said, like, it's towards the beginning. She said that her grandma was on this honeymoon, and as soon as they got done with that, they were moving to somewhere. Uh. I can't remember where. And I just wondered if, because I loved Charlotte's Angels, because, I mean, that's my cup of tea. Yeah. But I do agree with you. I felt like you didn't get an, enough of a, a pull to each one. You got a little taste of everybody. It was yeah. just the, the concept of them that I loved. Yeah. Right? And I knew you would, yeah. And so I'm like, I wonder if grandma was actually there, if you would have felt it more because you would have got more of, right. I don't know. I don't because know. the house that she's living in, her grandma lives in part of it. And she lives in part of it. So is the, is the grandma not going to come back? The grandma has to be there at some point in the series, I would think. I would really think so because she's kind of, to me, written like she's going to be this side yeah. character. And she talks to her on the like phone. Why she, I hope she doesn't talk to her on the phone the whole time. Yeah. Um, but I really liked, I mean, I liked Sarah. There was nothing. So... I didn't feel like um, sometimes main characters we've talked about this and I think it's been said before, but like I, that, like the too stupid to live, like I didn't get yeah. any of those. <laughs> I didn't get any of those things. Yeah. Um, you know, I just wish that it would have been more character developed. Mm -hmm. And yeah, again, was, first book, I get that, you know, all those things have to be, you know, taken in too. I did get a good first impression on the characters. Like there wasn't anything that made me say, oh, I don't want to see what happens to these characters because I do. So. And again, with me, I mean, I'm totally into the Charlotte's angels and hope that like we really get, you know, more of that in the future and all that stuff. It just, yeah. But once again, you guys, you two guys have Nick and Mac. You, once again, you have two guys, Nick and Mac, the like two love interests. <laughs> Thank you. The thing is, I forget. Okay, so Nick is the like, 
crime scene investigator coroner type guy. Yeah, and he's Mac Charlotte's son. One of their son. See, I don't remember whose son it is. Yeah. yeah. And then who's Mac? Um, I don't remember who Mac was. That's the problem with this book is I didn't take extensive notes. And um, it, a lot of it, I, I enjoy, I really enjoyed it while reading, but then I forgot 95% of it. I'm going to be honest with you. It like went in my brain and then completely escaped it. Mac helps at the second chance store with, okay. um, with the young teenage girl and her. He helps move the furniture and all that. Okay. And see, I got the impression that he just worked there and there was no love. In was there a love interest? Because I liked, I don't know how old Sam is, the bar owner. I liked her with Sam, even though, like, I hope, you know. Hi, Storm. Uh, oh, we, ju we, Storm. Ju we just started discussing the first book, uh, Whole Cat and Caboodle, and we gave it star ratings. And we just did characters. We're working on characters. Mac works at the store. Yeah, I, but Cheryl, I didn't even get a love interest thing at all. Like, I didn't get a love triangle love interest thing. Maybe, like, I just, I don't know. Did you get that? Like there was going to be a heavy love interest? Um, not necessarily, but knowing how cozies go, I can see that it was totally set up to move that way. Like I think she went out to dinner with one of the guys, but I didn't get a like romantic vibe from it. I don't know. Um, and Nick is supposedly like a high school. She knew him in high school. Crush or thing. sweetheart or something along that. Yeah. Line. Like there was a little, maybe a little bit of flirting. And then Mac, for some reason, I'm completely blocking him out. But I like the guy that owned the bar. Is his name Sam? The one that gave her Elvis? Yeah. Yes. I like I like him. I don't know how old he's supposed to be. But he's like, he he gives her help with like appraising the guitars and stuff. And he seems really sweet. And he like had a connection talking about her dad's guitar with her. And so I don't know. I like Sam. I don't know if he's ever going to be a love interest. But yeah, I don't know if he's like close in age um, yeah i don't know if he's like an older male friend or like a, like an older like maybe 50 60s like i don't know i don't know if it's ever established how old he was but leanna just said it and i agree if there's a love interest between nick and mac i definitely like mac better i don't know who i like because i don't even i remember mac working at the store but i don't remember anything else about him um and then Hannah said she, did, she didn't get a love interest vibe from Mac or Sam. Yeah, I didn't get a love interest vibe at all. Like maybe Nick seems like he likes her a little bit. Um, oh, Storms. Yeah, Storm said Nick's mom wants them together, but she doesn't. Yeah, I didn't get the impression that uh, Sarah wanted to date anybody in the first book. Storm said she gave it four stars. Yeah, Storm, um, Cozy gave it four stars. I gave it between four and 4.5. <laughs> and this was her reread because she's all caught up in this series. Oh, so she will know about the love interest. <laughs> uh, Leanna said it said Sam was more of a father figure. Okay. Whatever he is, I really liked Sam. Yeah, I enjoyed him. And um, I enjoyed the history that the their conversations brought. Yeah. Um, when he was talking about her family and like you were talking about with the guitars and you know, her father, I just thought that that was a really interesting way to like get some back knowledge, backstory mm -hmm. of hers. And I enjoyed it. And I thought it was funny, um, you know, when he was giving her Elvis and he's like, just get on up in the truck and she's her car. And she's like, wait, I don't want a cat. And he's like, clearly he's, he like, wants you. he's like, he's <laughs> like, he already, he's like, he goes, you already got one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I, yeah. and I loved a cat named Elvis. I think that's great because they were playing an uh, Elvis songs or Elvis mm -hmm. cover band or something. And he yeah. liked it. And he, but then when another person would come on, he'd just like leave. Yeah. He's like, he didn't like Mac Mick Jagger and the Rolling yeah. Stones. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <He's> like, <laughs> and he has funny. a little scar on his nose, little Elvis. He was, he was great. Um, normally like I love animals and cozies, but normally I don't get super attached, but I'm already attached to Elvis in the first book. So. Hello, Jessica. Nice Hi. to see you. Um, we just started discussing Whole Cat and Caboodle. Yes. And um, tell us if you read both of them and what your ratings are. And we know that you're going to be scooting out to go to a baseball game. I hope your team wins tonight. That's pretty fun. Did anybody message you a rating that wasn't on? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Uh, Blake did. Okay. 
She said she was going to try to hop in here if she could, but okay. she did message me her rating. So I'll have to go back and look at the message. But, but she gave you her it. vote. So when we vote, we'll get yeah. the vote. Okay. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, so Jessica did read it. Okay, I read Cat and Caboodle but didn't get to PT. Okay, so uh, okay. we were talking about characters on Whole Cat and Caboodle. And what was your rating for that? She said she really liked Elvis. I love they kept smuggling Elvis in the bar chip back. <laughs> Sophia. Hi. Oh, she's already been here. <laughs> she has. I was just saying, yeah. Um, yeah, I agree. I thought Elvis was a fun cat. Yeah. Um, and he was a black cat, right? Like, so I like that. Because I have a black cat. So what did you guys all think of, of the character? Oh, she said she gave it four stars. What did you all think awesome. of the characters? Um, I know I saw the, the you know, a lot of people liked Elvis. A lot of people seem to like Charlotte's Angels, which I loved. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we talked a little about the battle of love interest. Um, so Storm, Tiffany, what did you think of the seniors? I love Charlotte's Angels. I hope we see more of them, and I hope Grandma comes back. Yeah. You are caught up in this, so um, I feel like you can give me a wink. You're like, dog. you're like, does Grandma? Uh, I just need to know if we see Grandma in the flesh. Uh, I but really feel like that would yeah. because if especially since they live together you're gonna get a whole like another layer of grandma's relationship with her and then you're gonna see grandma's friends even more and i feel like yeah yeah and then but we were also saying storm that we felt like we got a taste of the characters but we didn't get enough of a chance to connect to them so that's why we want to see more of them in the the future books but we all li we liked both the character all the characters but we didn't like get a strong connection to him. And then one of the Charlotte's angels was uh, the mom of one of her friends, right? Like, was it Avery or Jessica? One of the, one of them is the, their mom. So that was a cool connection. And Nick is also the child of, I think Charlotte. I think. Yeah. Um, I love the seniors and how they were so supportive of each other and protective of each other. Yes. Um, you know, seniors are a buzzword for me. And the fact that they formed a group called Charlotte's Angels, I just love them. I love the whole idea. I just hope it um, continue, continue. And Cheryl, Cheryl's thing is exactly how I feel. Yeah. Um, she, uh, good group of characters. Like, yes, 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 yes. They are in, ooh, Susan G. So they are in future Well, books. we know the seniors are in the future book, but, but is the grandma there? Is like the grandma come back? Does she live in, or does she like move off to another state or something? Yeah. Cause I was thinking Susan, and maybe I'm wrong that, and it, maybe it's just that it changes, but I was thinking that when, when Sarah was telling us about grandma in the very beginning, she was saying, we're married this wealthy man and they're on their honeymoon. And then as soon as their honeymoon's over, they're moving to such and such. And I was like, wait, what? Don't take grandma away before we even begin. Yeah. But you know, and that could change and, or I could be completely wrong as well. So. Um, I didn't read either one, but I have a definitive winner in my head. Can I vote if you need a tiebreaker? <laughs> you can definitely vote. Okay. Well, I've always said, if you didn't read the books, you can vote based on our debate. Based on what we say, you can vote. Even if you didn't read any of them, if you read one of them. So like Nancy, you can vote based on what we say. You can vote Lee. But I'm curious how you have a definitive winner in your head already. Is it because is it because I gave a Patrick Star with his mind blown emoji in the general chat when I was reading Murder at the PTA? <laughs> like I don't know. I have to admit, I did talk to Storm about Murder at the PTA a little bit because I was so curious what she thought uh, about a certain part, and so we had a little sneaky discussion. And I feel bad about it because you don't talk about book club. Fight <laughs> <laughs> club. The yeah, the first rule of book club is you don't, talk, you don't about talk about book, book club until book club night. Because uh, she, because she was like, I need. So, she's like, I want someone to get killed or action already. So I told her at what point someone gets killed because I knew she likes when people get killed right away. And then add that stemmed into like her telling me what she thought about it after she. Read it. <laughs> um, ha, uh, you uh, not that I know of Nancy, you're not missing anything. So usually, if I want to do a point five. I will say in my like actual, like in the text, I will say yeah. technically, you know, I would give this a 4.5 because it's not that I know of. Is it an option to do star? Half you, star. you can't. It's whole star. It's whole star yeah. only. Okay. Yeah. So then I just usually put it in my text below. Um, just to let you know, my husband's on call and I might get a text where I have to step away for a minute. So I would just check my phone. 
Um, Sarah has a hard time reigning in the seniors. Oh, see, now that is like right up my alley. Yes, love it, Storm. Thank you for telling me that. Liz, Liz is Avery's grandma. Um, that works, and Avery's the teenager that works at yeah. the store. Oh, she's a teenager. Well, she's very young. I thought I thought they oh, said high Avery's school. Avery's grandma, not our mom. Okay, that makes sense now. I mean, I think that they said she was still in high school, as far as I remember. Yeah. See, that's the thing is there was a lot. There's a lot of side characters, so I was like, like, hey, hey, that's this, that's this. But then, like, I can't keep them straight at this point. So that's why I really want to continue the series. Oh, Storm, she was having a hard time in the first book already. Reining them in. <laughs> True. Is your vote based on the covers? To be honest, I don't remember so many cozies after them. I like the cover of Whole Cat and Caboodle. It's beautiful. I would look at it. I love the little display in the window and the cat. and the Yeah. Purple. I agree. Um, no, my vote is based on something I don't like in books and what I've heard everyone saying about the other book. Oh, my gosh. I'm so intrigued now. Yeah. Okay. So after we debate this, or do you want to do a sprint at like 30 or 40 just to keep us on track for the hour, even if we're not done debating Cat and Caboodle? Yeah, we can go. Why don't we sprint at 30? Okay. Uh, Lee, can you um, be our time us off at 30 if, uh, if we're still Okay, tight? so characters, what's A? Atmosphere. Okay, setting. So setting. Um, I loved the thrift store setting. I loved her explaining what she does and how, like, they take, like, a bathtub and turn it into a planter or something like that. I love that it didn't seem like a traditional thrift store. is like a repurposed store. Like, they re repurpose stuff. Um, I love that part. And, but correct me if I'm wrong, because I don't, I've read books in between this. I didn't get a strong town set, like, uh, like, feeling. Like, they didn't really explore the town much. Like they did go to a art, like the the uh, the art thing, like her project, but like they they didn't like go get coffee or go get food, really, did they? Like they didn't like talk about other stores in the town. The problem is I don't know if I'm mixing it up with something else, but <sighs> that's the problem uh, of us reading with so much. <laughs> because I can't, I can't, I can't swear, I can't swear to to either but i really did as well as you enjoy the thrift shop yeah yeah can anybody uh, else tell us is there uh was there a strong town aspect because i didn't get it um i'm curious in like in the other the other uh books if we see more of the town because that's i love when the town becomes a character in its own and we see the town explored uh cheryl says teacup gardens i don't even remember what that is is that where they go to have tea Gotcha on the star thing. Good idea about the text. I know. Thank you, Nancy. Okay. And then Jessica said, I, okay. I like the thrift store setting, but like you, oh, wait, but like you, Cozy, I didn't really have a good sense of the full community other than the senior ladies. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, um, you can catch up on comments. I'm going to have to take a break. We can start the sprint at 30 because I got to talk to my husband. He's out on call right now. Okay. He just messaged me. Okay. Okay. So, um, um, are we going to go till 50? Yeah. Okay. Because we only got five minutes till the sprint. So, I'll see you guys then. Okay. Um, so, Breezy. Hi, Breezy. She said, hi, I'm at work. <laughs> and finishing up murder at the PTA. And you've already read the whole cat and caboodle? Okay. I see your later message. Susan G., at Dark Roots Creations. Oh, at Lee. Okay. I bet I can guess what you don't like because I didn't like it either. I'm so, I think I know, but I'm still not, actually I do. I think, I mean, I would know what I think you're talking about. I have a good guess, but I mean, people like different things, I guess, but um, I think they went out to eat once that I can remember. That That's what I was going to say. Not, I'm not positive, but I had, just finished a book about that they were talking about the little diner in their town, not like a huge role. Don't get me wrong, but that just that they were going to finish up what they were doing so that they could go have dinner at the diner. But that might be 
it might even be the uninvited corpse. So I can't swear to any of that. <laughs> Somebody says hi that um, they made teacup gardens. I don't remember. I am just, I messaged my, I'll mess. Okay, cool. That's okay. That's okay. We still love your vote, Breezy. We, we, we've, we've, yeah, you're good to go. I will be breaking for dinner at six my time, but we'll be back after. Gotcha. Gotcha. What are you fixing? Tell us what you're having. Of course, you know, I'm going to ask that question. So, um, as far as the atmosphere, um, I like, like Cozy said, and, and I mentioned, I did love, love, love the thrift store. I liked um, the bar scenes with Sam. Um, I talked a little bit about that. I just felt like that was a really cool way. I said this before, but I felt like it was a really cool way to get the backstory of some of her family um, through those conversations. I, I like that... I felt like the Charlotte's Angels added a bunch to the setting in my mind just by them being there. I really, really love that concept. And I'm so happy that Storm said they're not, you know, she's not able to rein them in because that's when I really get attached to those characters when they're, when they're, being ornery and, and there's, you know, she, they're constantly um, having to not only try to solve a crime, but try to keep other people in line that want to help solve the crime that maybe shouldn't be. Uh, what did you all think of the, of the setting? I don't know that I had as much of a picture of the town that they, that they were in. And I can't even remember where, where it takes place. So I need to look at that. Like what state? I don't remember. I need to start taking notes again. I stopped taking notes after the first round because I felt like, oh, North Harbor, Maine. Okay. Ocean front town of North Harbor, Maine. Yeah. That sounds like a really, really idealistic place. I just don't know if I felt that I got that from, from this book. Um, what was I going to say? But anyways, when I was taking notes after the first round, I felt like I took myself out of the story a little bit, or I felt like I took out some of the enjoyment out of the, the story. Yes, you are right. It takes place in Maine. Um, nice, Nancy. Leftover casserole is yummy. Is it the, the broccoli cheese rice stuff? Cause that sounds really, really yummy. Um, I'm still really focused on what, so Lee, would you kind of text me in the messenger of, uh, discord and because I'm pretty sure I know what you're talking about. I don't clearly remember much of a description of the town. Okay. So same Cheryl. We're kind of all in the, in the same boat on that one. Interesting. Interesting. So we're going to sprint. It's 29. We're going to sprint at 30. Um, tell me, Oh, it's 30 on the dot. So t tell me in the chat what you're reading. I'm reading the uninvited corpse and then I have a romance going. Thank you, Lee. I always do that wrong. All right, reading till 30. Oh, I just, we're not reading till 30. We're reading till 50. It is 30. <laughs> reading till 50. All right, guys. Jessica said she's reading scene. Oh, scene of the grind. All right. Enjoy, everyone. Happy reading. We'll see you at, at 10 till. Oh, the second make link's low. Yay, yay, yay. Happy reading, everyone.
All right. How was your sprint? I only got like two or three pages read because I had to deal with something. Gotcha. But, um, but I'm on 71% of Natural Thorn Killer. There's like eight or nine of us reading it in our Discord group, and I'm loving it. Um, it's great. And then I got a new case for my Kindle, and I put stickers on it. Mm. So like I, can't, I can't stop staring at it because it's like so cute. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Cute, cute, cute. I'm um, reading The Uninvited Corpse. Have you uh, read it yet? No. Okay. I didn't want to mix the books like so I'm like waiting because like I don't want to get anything confused with the knockout book which I'm pretty sure I've done um <laughs> <laughs> I thought I'd be okay because they're so different it's not yeah. like they're both craft books or they're both book books like but there's little different. things that you can yeah that you can make but up. just like cozy mysteries because of the formula of them they still you know right. and we're starting to to blend things together I'm like was that grandma on that book or was that grandma on that book <laughs> Or was you this know? diner and there, um, that diner and there? Yeah. I said that earlier because I'm reading something where the the near where the protagonist said, "I'm trying to get done whatever she had going on because I want to go have the special that's at the diner on Tuesday or you know whatever." Yeah. But I don't remember which book it was. Yeah. Um. So, anyways, um, Sophie is reading Murder with Puffins. Oh, so you finished the first Meg Lanzel and you went right on to the next. That's yes. awesome. Um, Jessica said she's reading Scene of the Grind. That's the only series, I think, that I have not checked out by Tanya Kappas. Oh, I thought I, I, I heard Scene of the Grind and I'm like, oh, Cleo, Cleo. Uh, that, yeah, that's Tanya Kappas, Kappas Killer Coffee series. I'm on mm -hmm. book six and I enjoy it. But there's some, sometimes the main character can really annoy me. Like she'll do I stupid things. <laughs> I think that's the only series that I haven't checked out by her. I think. I th well, I'm not positive because, I mean, right. I've read her Mimi Bell. I've read her Campers. I mean, I'm not caught up, but, I mean, I'm reading her Campers. I haven't read that one. I think this – I think I think it's still ongoing. There's, like, nine or – but I think this is one of her first series. So the writing isn't as strong in The Killer right. Coffee. So, um, yeah, the writing isn't as strong, and and then the main character can be a little annoying. But they're really enjoyable. I like it. Awesome. I, I plan on it. I mean, I love yeah. coffee cozies. So. It's on K, it's on KU. So um, I've already made a commitment to stay on KU. Yay. So I that's, you know. Um, oh, Hannah's reading The Uninvited Corpse. Ooh, Leanne is reading Death in a Budapest Butterfly. Oh, I gave that okay. a five. Yeah, I, I love loved it. Loved it. Oh, Cheryl's reading the last 10 pages of um, we'll Always Have parents. Have parents, and then I'll start Wicked Stitch. Is that the Renaissance? Uh, I don't know. I think it might be embroidery. Is that Embroidery Mystery by Amanda Lee? It could be that, too. It just sounds like maybe that Renaissance series by, like, Jim and Joyce Levine, which I've been yeah. wanting to try out for so long. A couple people read it in Discord, and I think they were disappointed. Uh, yeah. Um, what's cooking? So might have missed something. I tried to make cashew chicken. We don't use flour, so it's usually runny, but used zaytum gum, and it's not runny at least. That's good. Awesome. She said she's reading Lady Wicked by Scarlett Scott. Awesome. Sounds historical. It, it definitely sounds historical. I'm reading Fogged In by, by uh, Barbara Ross. So I um, messaged Cozy earlier. So Barbara <laughs> Ross was at malice and she was so nice That's she was awesome. so friendly i had to pass it along to cozy because i know what a big fan she is yeah if she was like nice. don't if get me she, wrong if she was like like moody you'd be like oh yeah no she was she was so friendly and personable she was great and lee i don't i don't remember what number fogged in is but she just finished number three i think and she gave it four stars so she it's growing on her i was like yay because she started off thinking it was just okay so Oh, Cajun. Good luck. You just you just read number 26. What did you think of it? Yeah. And then, oh, yeah. And then Tell us what you read in number 26 because that's going to give me an idea. This is you. Yeah. Um, okay. Hello, Spedbot. Yeah. He says you call him Spedbot. Sped. Uh, Sped. Okay. Okay. The and Battle of the Rabbit. The Battle of the Lambert. Yeah. He read okay. Murder at the PTA, but he didn't read Whole Cat and Caboodle. Christmas in July books. Are you reading any or do you need recommendations? And hi, Karen. Hello. Um, okay. 
I hadn't put that up yet. I, I wrote it, but then I didn't put it up. Cute puppy row, of course. Yeah, I got my puppies back there. The black and white one is Nova. And then the black one in the back is Gizmo. And they're both senior dogs. Gizmo oh. is 13, going to be 14. And Nova just turned 10. Excellent. They're my, adorable. They're my babies. Cozy reader life. She said, enjoyed some family fun grilling today. Awesome. Boyfriend and the dogs. Excellent. Happy to at least catch the chit chat portion of the sprints. Yay. Yeah. Did you read either book, one or the other, both? Tell us. Um, Ace said, Hallmark movies and mysteries book list. Mm. Interesting. Hi, Ace. Yeah, there's... um. Some they have turned some of the cozy series into Hallmark movies like Joanne Fluke, um, The Flower Shop, the the uh, Garage Sale mystery, which they which I think they stopped after the whole Lori Laughlin scandal. <laughs> <laughs> the um, and then the one Aurora, with Jewel, the Fixer Aurora. Upper. Oh, Jewel? Jewel! Wait, like Jewel the singer? Yeah. Wow, I didn't know that. She she plays in the, the um, Kate Car the Kate Carlisle Fixer Upper series. Mm -hmm. Yep. Interesting. Um, and then there's Aurora Tea Garden. That's a popular one. Oh, yeah, one. yeah, by Can uh, Candace Cameron. Cameron Burr. Is that right? Yeah. Um, yes. Ace, it's nice to have you here. Thank you for joining us. Leanna said she read 14 pages. Nice. Uh, finished my Meg Lenslow and read six pages of Wicked Stitch. 15 pages of Scene of the Grind. It's Tanya Capis. I don't oh, no. know what <laughs> is right. I think she did. It. I think she accidentally pressed something. Does this have a butt dial? It's just yeah. a <laughs> just a like elbow or something. Um, I think she said it was Tanya Capis. Uh, yeah. So it's uh, her coffee shop series, or coffee house, or something. I read eighteen pages of the Uninvited Corpse. I had to switch laundry in the middle of this one. Um, the Tanya Kappa series is called Killer Coffee Mystery, I believe. Or I've been saying it wrong this whole time. Oh, Mr. Monk is miserable. Is that number two? My fingers. There we go. And I'm at 62%. Nice. Oh, you're at 37% of number two already? Did you, just start, did you just start it? Because that's really impressive. <laughs> yeah, that's... Wow. Um, I started out not being a fan, but now I'm getting into it. Nice. That's the that's, Barbara Ross. Yeah, that's definitely one that you got to build up to. And then you get addicted and you can't wait for the next one. A few more pages in Sense and Sensibility. Nice. Seeing the Grind is Tony Capus. It is the S for my summer readathon. Nice. Can you? Nice. Okay. So, so Lee, you've been, and you've been listening to the, the Camper series on audiobook. And they normally say the author's name. Is it Capus or Capes or Caps? Do you remember what they say it is? Because I always say Kappas and I, because I think that's what they said in the Mail Carrier series when I listened to an audiobook, but I don't know. You know, I listen to it too on audio, but I don't You just don't pay there. attention. Yeah, next time you listen to one, see what they say. Because they always say blah, 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 by blah, 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 narrated by. So. True, true. Um, the Hannah books. No, she was talking about the. the Barbara main, Ross, the main, main clam bake is yeah. what uh, Lee was talking about getting into. I didn't read much. Finished eating, feeding the dogs. Nice. All, all important things. Hello, Cairo. Speaking of dogs. Hello. Aww. Um. Oop, I lost my spot. Oh, she said it's Amanda Lee. So you were yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. We have the, the ninth and 10th book is Halloween theme and Christmas theme. So we're going to read those together, but I need to catch up because I'm like behind, but the fifth one has been out at the library forever. I'm on hold on it. And it's like, it's so weird. That's the only one that's out on. And that's the next one I need to read. <laughs> it says two weeks till I get it. Um, Shayla said, I'm not reading right now. I'm working on my Siri, my serious spreadsheet. So maybe I can start a SAS list. Nice. Awesome. All right. So do we want to start the next letter while we're kind of yeah, yeah. in between? Why don't we do that? So, so you, we did a, right. Did you anything yep. else? Was, okay. W writing. Yeah. It's writing. Okay. Um, 
I said I like the writing because I and and there was a bit of humor mixed in. Like I like the humor part. I always like when there's humor mixed in the writing. And to me, the writing flowed easily, and that's my biggest that's my biggest thing. If I can read the sentence and it doesn't feel disjointed, and I could easily flow, I don't have to stop. I can easily picture everything. I think the writing was solid. Um, it wasn't like beautifully descriptive or anything above and beyond but it was good writing. It didn't take me out of the story. They didn't change tense too much and anything like that. So I like um, I'm going to second everything you said, but only add, I did like the pace of the writing. Mm -hmm. um, Cause I think that that also I consider in the writing style is mm -hmm. the pace of yeah. the way they do things. And I thought that the pace was pretty good because at some points, I know we're not talking about the other book, but at some point at the beginning of the other book, I was, irritated with the pace of that one yeah and so I read this one second and I noticed a difference in that I enjoyed the pace of the whole cat and caboodle much better it followed the traditional cozy like timeline absolutely yeah of course I will say this too just in defense of the PTA once it got started it was like like I did I yeah. almost said a phrase I don't want to say but it was like right Pedal to the metal, like I, once it yeah. got started. I, I didn't put what percentage the murder happened on this one, but it was in the first couple chapters, which mm -hmm. I'm fine either way. I prefer it happening later on because I prefer knowing the character that dies. Um, we didn't really get to know the character that dies. He was mentioned, but I like the writing. Um, and I'm the opposite. I prefer the, the murder to happen. I don't want it to happen page one because yeah. I've read that before and I don't like that. No. But I also don't want it in, like, the eighth chapter. I'm like, what are we doing here? Like, you know, I want it in, like, I feel like by chapter two or three, you know enough to know that they're the, going to be the one that dies. So you know enough right. that you don't like them. I mean, to me. Um, so I prefer in the beginning, which was part of my issue. But I, I like when it's later on, too, because you don't know who's going to die. Sometimes they switch it up. Like uh, in the other book, it could have we're not talking about it yet. But in the books that, that hold it from later on, it could be multiple of people. Sometimes it's not just who you think it is. Um, and, and he does that in the, the Haley Powell series where I thought it was one person was going to die, but it was somebody else because mm -hmm. it had been a couple chapters in. Yeah. And in this one, it's it's the one of the old lady's boyfriends, and you're like, oh. But he also had come in and delivered some china to her thrift store too, so you did get to know him a little bit. Yeah, and then like demanded it back, and yeah. or wanted it back, and you know, um, that was, yeah. Um, for as little as we got to him, I felt like his character had a lot to him. You know, he was married like to four different people and he was conning people and, yeah. um, you know, he was stealing their jewelry on top of conning people. I mean, like for like being killed and there was a lot going on. But with him. they didn't, they didn't say motives until after he was killed. I feel like. So, True. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So you didn't get a chance to get to know him or, or hate him or anything. Denise is pushing it, but one was free and the other was 199, but I may not be able to stick it out more. Are you talking about Hannah Swenson? Denise is pushing it. What are you talking about, Cajun Peach? I don't, like Denise Swanson? Yeah. <laughs> Let us know. We're just not sure. It might be character, yeah. might be author. Um, oh, I'm up to five or six in that one. And then and, and the main clam bake, one of my favorites. I just bought some books from Bowery Yay. Rice. Ross, I'll have to read them soon. And if anybody has Kindle Unlimited, like three of the the main clam bake books are on Kindle Unlimited right now. So that's nice. Nice. Number seven. Thanks, Susan G. It's Tanya Kappas. Okay, so the way okay, that I... And I think that I, I might have... Um, I think at the beginning you were saying capes, and then I'm like, I think it's Kappas. And then now you, you've been converted to Kappas. But I was like, maybe we're both wrong. <laughs> I don't know. Hello. Hi, Najat. I really like your profile. Mm -hmm. I'm so happy you caught this too. Has the weather, I've been thinking about you in Kuwait <laughs> and uh, like one of the hottest places on earth right now. Like, right. Um, how, how are you doing? Tell us yeah. how you're doing, please. Um, no, I started about half an hour before the live chat and listening to it. That's Love the great. Narrator. Awesome. Great, great progress. Awesome. Saying hello. Back as we ate during the sprint. Nice. 
I didn't like the switching between past and present. It got um, kind of confusing at points. I actually didn't notice it. Did no, you read I was it? Like did you read it or did you listen to it on audio? Because maybe that makes a difference. Because there are some books I do notice it and I get frustrated with it when it's um, really obvious, particularly if it's like, in the same sentence, you're switching tenses. I'm like, oh, I can't, I, I don't, uh, you know. Um, but I didn't notice it in this one. Did you, Cozy? Um, Cheryl said, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, um, I was just, my husband walked in. Um, I was telling him something. But the are you talking about there is past and present in Hulk and Caboodle? I didn't even notice it. Okay, so you didn't notice it either. No, if you need to I, do something. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Go ahead. You know. No, no. He he just came home and I, I told okay. him um, he brought lunch. I said put it in the fridge. Oh, uh, okay. The yeah, because I read it on ebook and I didn't notice it. Um, they didn't put a said people said he was a jerk, but it would have been nice to see him exhilarating. Yeah, true. Yes, the Hannah series. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. So is pushing it, but one was free and the other one was $1.99, <laughs> but I may not be able to stick it out more. Gotcha, occasion. You're all caught up now, so. <laughs> Which makes perfect sense. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't know if I can stick it out anymore either. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you learned all that after his death, right? I yeah, mean, exactly. You never saw it. You just heard about it. Yeah. Ugh, hot and humid as well now. Thank God for Eric. No kidding. I'm happy you guys have it. Yeah, no kidding. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> no, no, we didn't get, no, no reason to be embarrassed. We just no, weren't for sure. That's why I was like, but, Den I was like Denise Swanson? Because <laughs> that's the only Denise author I know. I listened to it, so I didn't notice it. But then I don't think I ever noticed past him. I definitely noticed it from time to time, but I did not notice it in this. I, I do too, but I, for some reason, didn't notice it on this. I missed some of what book we are discussing. The whole cat and caboodle. And then we're going to switch over to murder at the PTA. Haha. Uh -huh. I was just about to say that I hoped you were in a lovely AC room. No kidding, Sophia. Hannah said, I read it. Okay. So that makes a little, that makes more sense. And so there were spots in the book where she would talk about how she oh. got Elvis or bits in her past. I do remember that, yeah. but there was no clue to know if you were reading in the past or present. Okay. okay. I mean, I definitely remember the kind of like her talking about, you know, getting Elvis and, and, and that. I, I like the little flashbacks of how she got Elvis. I didn't think it was in my head problematic as far as like writing and switching. No, this. it didn't I take mean, me. It didn't take me out of it. It didn't do it to where like I, I didn't notice. And I could tell when she was talking about it, like when she got him. Um, so I like that part. My profile pic was from an anime that I watched and loved. I love it. Love it. So what's the next letter? The AWP plot plot um I, I mean i i loved it i mean as far as like the whole premise like mm -hmm. the uh the the definitely the premise of the the both the second hand shop i loved stuff being you kind of mentioned it but like mm -hmm. being refurbished for other things like it was really mm -hmm. i, I like that sort of thing so i loved that I really love the premise of Charlotte's Angels and an mm -hmm. older, you know, group of women fighting crime and all that. That always is a big, big, big draw for me. And, I mean, as far as the plot in this specific book, like, I loved the reasoning that they uh, that this killer was offed or this mur this victim was offed. Like, he, like I said, he was married to, what, four different women. He was conning women yeah. out of money and jewelry and, you know... I mean, we didn't find that out earlier, but I'm saying I loved that 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 premise. Like, I was interested in that. Mm -hmm. um, so overall, I really, really enjoyed the plot of this one. Yeah, everything you say, and I like the mixture of mystery and personal life um, because you know I'm big on that. I don't like it when it's 90% mystery. Like that drives me crazy. So the mystery and uh, in a 
the mystery and the personal life was a great mix. I loved it when she'd go to the store and she didn't just say, oh, I went to work and came home. She like said what she was doing, like they were painting it this color. They were doing this and this. I like the little things like when they went to uh, her little her little class where she showed how to build something and the old man got confused that he was supposed to be a naked model, but it was just a hand model. Hand model. <laughs> So he's naked going down the hallway. And that's actually how the they find out who the killer is because she flashbacks and she's like, yeah, we uh, Daisy's like, we saw the naked, I saw the naked man, uh, you know, going through the hallway. And she's like, wait, you weren't supposed to be around at that time. So they circled back and that's how they she found the killer. That was hilarious. Um, it was, it was <laughs> so funny. Yeah. So funny. That's, yeah, I love that scene. It was so funny. And then, um, them having i love the i love life things like them sitting at the the kitchen table and they're making fun of her like saying you don't know how to make tea and she's making tea and stuff like that like i love that and that's uh, yeah. all part to do with plot yeah so i i'm i'm totally with you like those sort of things and i still need our second nature or second are I need those more than I need the mystery. Exactly. That's what I'm trying to say. And then the, um, the mystery I wasn't too into, but I wasn't completely over it. Like I was into it, but I wasn't like super excited about it. Like finding out who did it, but I was into um, it. So. You reminded me of something when um, you said about the um, class, there was something I wanted to say, but I don't remember what it was now. Yes, the naked model was hilarious. And oh, um, she was talking. I she so she did talk about the community a little bit in the sense of she was talking about how she wanted to have her own studio classes. Yeah. But right now they were all at the community center. Yeah. And you know it, that just reminded me. I mean, there right. still wasn't a big you know deal of yeah. it. Really, but I mean, yeah. there. I have forgotten about that. Yeah, she there was there was a little bit. inkling, but it wasn't like an everyday thing, yeah. like where she goes to the local coffee shop and then she right. goes to the sandwich spot for her lunch. And then she goes to the bookstore and the person that owns this, like, yeah, there wasn't a lot of that. But there was a little taste. And I think it will expand as the series goes. The victim reminded me of Cell Block Tango from Chicago. He had it coming. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Oh, the musical? Oh, the Chicago, okay. the musical, the, the, he had it coming song. You know, oh. that is hilarious. That's so funny. I mean, I'm a huge musical fan. So that's, oh the, yeah. Oh yeah. She couldn't cook. So that's why they were like, can you even make tea type of thing? <laughs> like, are you going to burn the water for the tea? Like, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. I love little stuff like that. That's what makes it. That's what makes a, a cozy, a cozy. Oh, and I liked like, yeah. And then, and then like she gave the, um, if I'm thinking about the right book, she was talking about her driver's license and am I not I thinking remember. of the right book I don't about remember. getting it? Like, um, her grandma teaching both of them oh, but yeah, yeah, yeah. how to drive a stick and her brother didn't or, yeah, yeah, or yeah. something like that. I mean, it, it, I'm jogging my memory now. And that wasn't a big deal. It was just kind of fun to, to, yeah, I again, like, yeah, the, I like, like, yeah, little mm, things that don't yes. matter thrown in. That's what makes it good. Yeah. And then, um, so plot is plot still has to do with like the murder and how it's solved, or is that more intrigue? Um, I think they're both, I, I think that can be in both. I mean, the right. intrigue of the murder, but the plot, I would be think like how the murder happened and all that. Well, because the murderer was his sister. And I like mm -hmm. that because it was like, you don't really see that too often where they're close to the victim. So. Yeah. Um, I enjoyed that too. And then the intrigue to me would be like your level of interest. Like I uh -huh. liked this particular like plot line of the murder mm -hmm. of, you know, um, like and I, I, I and I think how she came to the conclusion of it was seemed seemed realistic, like you know something that she thought it might be Daisy, and then something Daisy said, she's like she's jogged her memory. She's like, oh, okay, yeah, it is her. And the way that she confronted her what, could have been a little dangerous because she invited her to the thrift store to like look at the thing. Yeah. So that was a little stupid, uh, but she might have had somebody on the back burner knowing about it. I don't remember that part, but yeah, I thought it was realistically done uh, with plot wise and I enjoyed the plot. So. Yeah. I, I really was intrigued um, with the particular mystery of, of why he was killed and what was going on. Mm -hmm. 
So that's so the so I is intrigue, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah it, it held my interest, but there wasn't anything that shocked me. Um, there wasn't anything that kept me on the edge of my seat, but it was enjoyable. And I thought the pacing in the plot was good, but there wasn't anything that's like, whoa, I didn't see that coming type of like the sister did shock me a little bit. Um, but I didn't have an inkling of who it could be. Like I wasn't invested in the mystery enough to be like, I think it's this person. I wasn't like sleuthing with them. If you know what I mean? I was just going along with the flow. And then when she's like, Oh, it's Daisy. I'm like, Oh, that's a good twist. But I wasn't intrigued enough to like be on the lookout for who did it. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, this, this one did. I, I thought it was, I thought it was an in interesting. Mm -hmm. Nancy said, I just checked Goodreads. The majority of the reviews on her last three books have been three stars and up. So many people still love Hannah Swinson. I, Those I call I co that, cozy dabblers. They read one a year and that's what they read. <laughs> and I think if you read it once a year, you could still enjoy it. Or you, you can, can still enjoy it as opposed to. I read them all in like three years or two years. So yeah, I did. I did too. I once I started that series, I read a, a, a lot of them, um, and you start seeing how the stories are so close, and and there's nothing new happening, and that sort of thing. We're not and getting on Hannah stagnant. Swinson, you guys. No, no, no. no. Okay, <laughs> look, at, okay. look at Peach. Look at Peach. I'm like, no, we're not getting into it this time. <laughs> the triangle just makes me roll my eyes, and I hate. Um, Rust from the oh, but this new thing she is doing is not good or the internal monologue thing. Yeah, I felt like I, I, I mean, I didn't like that at all. I don't want to get off on it, but yeah. I, I, I said that in in my last like wrap up. I didn't like the internal like the rational Hannah thinks this, the irrational Hannah thinks this. I was like, it was. I didn't go, like that. go back on any one of our live shows and you'll get some hand on top. <laughs> today. All right. All right. So what's the, um, what's the next one? I L. Oh, Jessica, are you here? What's L or storm knows it too. Logic. I, I think just, it is logic. I need to just look it up. I, I think it is logic. Yeah. I'm almost the so logic is like okay, logic. So like realistic, how much it made sense. It made sense. It was logical to me. Yeah, I didn't think anything was over the top. I mean, no. like I said, the whole I didn't think she was too stupid to live, but I do agree. Like once you said like she invited her, I was like, oh, you know, probably not the best move, but I also don't think like it was as dumb as like when people know the person has a gun and they still like run in or I mean I didn't think any of that and I thought the way that she sleuthed was logical re uh, like realistic yeah. um, I didn't think that the that the which I really like to see one of the things I really liked is I didn't think that the murder or the murder I didn't think the solution just came to her like there was something that happened like you yeah. said that jogged her memory it mm -hmm. wasn't just like somebody standing there and snapping their fingers and like, Oh, now I know what happened. Yeah, At and least like, it, it was realistic. Like how it happened to her. Like, she's like, wait, there's mm -hmm. some, she said something. I know she was supposed to be, she said she was at a doctor's appointment, but she said she saw the naked guy running by like, so it doesn't make sense. So yeah. So it was very logical how she did that. Um, that's why breaking down cozies like this, I think it's good, but it changes my perspective of the book, especially with murder at the PTA. So breaking it down like this, uh, but uh, overall, like I really like this and I don't like breaking, I don't like being critical about it. So, <sighs> so entertainment, I think very we like, yeah. yeah, very entertaining. I think that we did that with the rating shows mm -hmm. you our, you know, enjoyment um, in it. Um, I really, really enjoyed this. I gave it between four to four point right. five stars. And if if you came in late, we said that we enjoyed this round of books the best out of all four knockouts. And I said, and Tiffany agreed that if these books were to go up against any other book, they could win. They would both win because they were both that so. good. So putting two great books against each other, very different books, but both very great books. I think that I think we nailed the wild card choice, like because we're the wild card is two different books and we nailed that like out of the park. Uh, but yeah, so these were these are great. And uh, I will definitely continue the series. I'm looking forward to it. I'm going to continue on audio books, yes. though. Yeah. 
I will definitely continue the series. Yeah, and I'm looking um, forward to character development, setting development, laughter. I feel like there's Emmy humor, so it's going to be great. Yes, uh, yes, yes. Um, I want to know what she is doing. It's the whole irrational, <laughs> rational Hannah. It's very, very, like it makes yeah. me feel like I'm re I'm inside somebody's. I just it's didn't like, it's it. like it's like having the good and, and evil uh, angel and the devil on your shoulder. She's like, well, this Hannah would do this, and that Hannah would do that. It's, but it was for every single thing. It was yeah, like, and it's only been the last couple books, so it's it hasn't. So it's just like she's doing some new thing. Maybe she thinks it's a fresh development, but she could have did so many things to make it fresh. <laughs> I didn't care for it. I don't yeah. like it at all. At all. Like, I really didn't like it. Logic. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you. at 30, we will do uh, another sprint. Yeah. Thir so, uh, Lee, if you're still here, keep us on track, ma'am, please. Um, at the end, wasn't there someone in the back room when she confronted her? I think there was. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, I was like, I was like, I don't remember. I was like, it could have been stupid the way she did it. But I said, I think someone she had on the back burner. So, yeah, that makes sense. It was very entertaining. I really enjoyed it. I knew you would, Cheryl. I knew you'd love it. Um, so with her other series, uh, you love the, she does the magical cats, right? And so is it the same? Is the cats, because I felt like Elvis was, Elvis was in a good portion of it, but I don't feel like it was 50 50 with the cat or maybe it was like the, the animals featured more than in other series, but is in the magical cat one, like the cats, like the main focus, I feel like it would be. I would assume so. Yeah. I, I mean, I can't answer, but I'm going to guess. Magic. Yes. She loves the magical cat series. And she said, yes, already got number two out on Hoopla. Awesome. Yeah. I knew she liked it. Yeah, I will definitely be continuing. I it. was I surprised my Cheryl was hadn't funny. read it yet. Um, because I did. I really. So now switching gears, we can at least talk about what we rated. Yeah. Yeah. And just like um, overall, overall little bit, bit of stuff. Yeah. I rated Murder at the PTA at five. I rated it a five. Oh, wow. I'm surprised that you rated it a five. Um. I really, really liked it. This this I, this book is very going to be very polarizing. And guys, please be completely honest. Uh, tell us what you thought of it if you read it, because uh, this is not a traditional cozy mystery. This is like an R-rated cozy mystery. Definitely. <laughs> and, and this is not a typical Lee Hollis. I think he was like pushing the envelope with this one. And I, I oh, I was going to say if this was a debut author. I don't think they would let this be categorized as cozy mystery. I think because it's a it's an established, uh, well-selling author that they they allowed it. But like, if someone just said, "Here, this is my book," they're gonna be like, "This isn't a co cozy." <laughs> and I think that when I interviewed Lee Hollis, he said that he pushed the envelope on this. Oh, did he? I need to go back and watch what he talked um, about it. Because murder at the PTA, murder at the bake sale. That doesn't <laughs> like you didn't get I what you thought he, you were getting. I think that he um, said something like it's way different and um, that he really, that he really pushed the envelope. Um, I mean, he was either, maybe, he might've been talking about one of the desert flower books too, yeah. because there was something in one of the desert flower books that was pretty shocking for a gozi. So he might've been talking about that too, but. Um, I was trying to was, remember with Haley Powell, if he pushes it a little bit. I feel like maybe right, a little like bit. this. No, maybe a little bit, but not enough to notice. But this was like, you didn't get one thing you got. So I'm going to give you guys, before we go into details, I'm going to give you guys some trigger warnings to how this is not cozy. There's references to drugs, a sex scandal, suicide, escorts, corrupt cops, prison, and violence. So maybe there's more that I missed, but that's in a cozy mystery. <laughs> yeah, it. It was, and it was jam packed. It was jam packed. Jam packed. Um, the cast usually play a big part in the series. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And we'll go to ratings um, 4.25 for Cheryl. Okay. Surprising. Yes, um, yes, Lee, please keep us on track. We're doing mm -hmm. a sprint at 30. Storm yeah. said she rated it a two. I knew Storm would be one that didn't like it that much. Yeah. Leanna said she rated it a five. Okay. Um, Dream said I rated it probably a two at best. Okay. At okay. best. So it could have been a one. Interesting. Nancy said, sorry, I'm off topic. That's okay. 
Um, Hannah said she rated it a 5.2. I finished it so fast. Um, Sped said a 3. But you told but me 2 before I talked to you today. Did you? Did Because he's like, okay, Sped is a critical analyzer. He'll pick everything apart. So did you think about it more and you changed it to a 3? Uh, Susan liked both books, but she gave this one 3.5. It didn't feel like a cozy and there were aspects I didn't like. Yeah. Yes. Who uh, murder at the PTA is going on my list <laughs> with when I gave you the trigger warnings. <laughs> well, now I'm confused because what I thought that you wouldn't like was is that. What well, I thought she wouldn't like that. The Okay. The murder doesn't take place until I wrote it down. Uh, the murder doesn't play, take place till page 75 of the ebook or 25% into the book, 28% into the book. That's what I thought she wouldn't like. I'm just interested in what it was that she didn't like. Cause she said she had like at the very beginning of like five minutes into this life, she was like, I know what I'm voting on. I know. Because of I think she said what I, th I thought what she wouldn't like was that the murder didn't happen till 28% uh, in. And it might be, it, it might be that I thought it would be something different, but I was wrong because she just said, Ooh, I'm putting it on my list. So right. I was wrong. Um, had a problem with the dutiful senator's wife until she started evolving. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. I definitely, I definitely, so as much as I love this book, I definitely had issues. Fun fact, I've never done this before. So I read it on ebook in one day. I started it like in the evening on the fourth and I finished it by the fifth. And I was on the edge of my seat. I loved it. I read it in like two sittings. I gave it five stars. I couldn't stop thinking about this book so much that when, when Sped said he was going to read it and he was listening to it on audiobook and he didn't like the narrator, I'm like, I want to see if after the shock value is gone, if I get the same experience and how I feel about it on audiobook. So last, so yesterday in one day, I listened to it on 1.8 speed because I already knew it was happening. And so I read this book twice and I've never done that before. And I did get a completely different experience on audiobook. And when you took away the shock value, it made me change my opinion of the book. But my first overall enjoyment rating is a five. Hannah, or sorry, Leanna, I totally um, agree with you. Um, Susan G, infidelity is a big no-no for me in cozies. Um, gotcha. Yeah. And that's a fair, that's a right. fair point. Um, I didn't read this one, but now I'm really curious. Yeah. Um, there's a lot there's a lot. Uh, oh, sorry. Sped three. said three is a meh. <laughs> yeah, see, a three isn't a good book. I was trying to be, I was like, like, three is good, three is average. He's like, three is meh. And he has like a whole point system that he does. And he made me critical think this book. And I'm like, I don't like it. You're making me realize that there was plot holes and, and stuff. And when you take away the shock, it's more realistically like a three, but it's a five to me. Um, there was definitely issues, yeah. I probably would have given the book a 4.5, but I had trouble connecting with one of the characters. So what did you end up giving? Oh, I think she said 4.25 earlier. Oh, okay. 4.25. I should say rampant infidelity in a cozy is not enjoyable. Mm. True. That's but I, I totally get that. That I mean, that's a valid, that's a valid point. The only thing that made this, that still made this a cozy mystery is that everything wasn't into great detail. If, if the topics that I mentioned were done into great detail, then it wouldn't be a cozy, but the, it was just talked about. It wasn't explored. And that's how it could still be considered a cozy mystery, but it's not your traditional. Like if you read Haley Powell and you're like, oh, I'm expecting a new Lee Hollis. And you're like, what the heck is this? And I could see some, I could see some readers being very offended by this book. When I was listening to it on audiobook, it sounded vulgar and way more vulgar than it sounded me reading it with my eyes, so. Yes, this book had way too much infidelity in it for me. I thought Sandra was, oh, it wasn't even just that. So I don't want to get too much, but I'm just saying it We're wasn't even so much it, yeah. that she was even blind to it. Like when they had taken the pictures and had the pictures of her husband with the um, the sister or whoever that was, I can't remember. Dra was, drama teacher. Drama teacher. Um, she was like, that's not him. You but can't that, tell that in the picture. 
Yeah. I got I, mean, I got the sense of that is because she's a senator's wife. Oh, and absolutely. She has to be composed at all times. And she's absolutely. like the perfect image. But when she went home, she knew it was him. And like, and she's like, this isn't the first time, the second time, maybe it's a 20 time. And you're like, whoa. And she knows for a fact he came home that night and she's like turning away in bed. She just doesn't want to address it. And I'm like, come on, grow a backbone. But which is what um, somebody said earlier. Like I had a really hard time with her, um, you know, playing it. But I totally 100 percent agree. Like at all times you have to like play the like, I'm just going to smile and, you know, everything is fine. Um yeah, we'll but, get, we'll, we'll get, we might not be, we will do a call pile on this, but it might not be as rigid as we did. Cause there's just too much to talk about. And yeah, you have, you have a list of issues. <laughs> uh, yeah. And see, I read on how they feel. I have to, if I analyze, I'm not going to enjoy anything. If I, out of the seven, almost 700 books, I'd probably like 50 that I read. I can't analyze. Like I, I just do my overall enjoyment. If I pick something apart, nothing's going to be a five star. So Spent, spent, I have a list of issues. Oh boy. Yeah. Okay, oh we're, boy. We're going to do a sprint and then we'll get back in. Yes. The, I'm really looking forward to this, to this uh, talk. All right. So we'll sprint until 50. Yeah. Again. Okay. So reading till 50. Enjoy everyone.
How was your sprint? Trying to find where I was at in the chat. Okay. I probably, okay. I'm figuring. I got, a, I, got a, I was going to say, I got a vote from Stephanie in Discord, so I just wrote that down. Oh, okay. I need to look at Blake because I got Blake. Um, okay. We were. We saw that. Okay. Okay. And then Jessica heading out. Okay. Bye, Jessica. Thanks for coming. Yeah. Hope you have Thank a lot of fun. Said. I love Lee okay. Hollis. He can do no wrong, in my opinion. And it's good to change formulas. You don't just want the same thing. We didn't get Jessica's vote, but I think she only read one of them. Yeah, she only read one. She of did. Them. She did. She okay. read one, but didn't get to the other. Um, he said, have fun. Hope your team does well. Enjoy reading to. Okay. So love the contrast between the two mean women and their lives mm -hmm. crashing together. Interesting. Yeah, and what Nancy said about lovely Hollis, you can do no wrong, and it's good to change formulas. You don't want to just – yeah, exactly. I love that this was so different. It doesn't mean that this was a perfect book and that I found flaws. I found, like, issues. But it the way that it shocked me and made me feel so many emotions, that's what I liked about it. So even if I had issues with it, it was so different that I, I enjoyed it. And I get what everybody is um, saying about – you know, there was a lot of triggers for it being a cozy, but I guess yeah. I feel like it was just a little more present, but it was still yeah. only like touched upon. But yeah. like most cozies, I, I, honestly, most cozies I think about, they come back home because they've been cheated on by their husband, by their, yeah. the, you know what I mean? This was just a little more in it. And I'm not saying that if you felt that way, you're wrong by any means. Right. I totally get what you're saying because right. I don't want, cheating in my cozy but to me there's a difference between just kind of saying that it happened or even just like seeing pictures and like it you actually experiencing i don't know and i didn't this, feel this, like it was yeah the scandal of it on the gossip thing well they did actually she maya did actually witness the drama teacher with her at one point um but yeah, i feel like I, I feel like this was handled in a way that it made it not realistic and it was over the top like they did he could to push the envelope he could have done like three things but he did like 10 things uh but it was handled in a way that it kept me so engaged that i didn't like even though i had issues with i was so engaged and i was like turning the page i was so into everything that it made me like wow like this was crazy and it, I, if i was gonna if i was gonna say this on traditional cozy this book wouldn't be a five star but just my overall enjoyment and even like not just enjoyment but like shock value it was a five to me so yeah i can't you can't really compare it to to anything else um, it wasn't just Sandra and her husband because we also have the principal cheating. When his infidelity was exposed, I almost stopped reading. That's the one that's having the affair with the sister. That's what was in my head. Yes. And you yes. said, no, the drama teacher. It was so he, yeah. the, the principal was cheating yeah. with the sister. That's where I got right. that from. Yeah. But did, um, like, like, like Tiffany said in, in Cozy Mysteries, the main character normally comes to town because her, her boyfriend was cheating, her husband was cheating on her. So like there's always infidelity in Cozy's a little bit, but not blatantly like this in your face. Yeah. Right. I agree. And I guess, so I, I totally get where people are coming from because like when I see people say, well, Cozy's need to move forward. I'm like, they need to have, you know, and I'm like, I don't know what you mean by that because I don't need I, and I don't want sex on page. I don't want cussing on page. I don't want, and I read romance. It has nothing to do right. with having a, you know, I just want cozies to stay cozy. Right. So I kind of get where, where right. I, well, I don't kind of, I totally get where people are coming because from. Because if I see this in a lot of series, it's going to turn me off. But the fact, that the fact that I've never seen this before made me very intrigued. Now, if this becomes a new norm, I then not. I'm then I'm not going to like it. But the fact that it was so different, I'm like, wow, this is like a breath of fresh air in a way, even though it definitely had issues. So but if it becomes a thing, no, then we're going to have a problem because then, then you're not you're not it's not a fluffy cozy at that point. Right. Right. Um, so Spet said, 
I'm not a cozy reader, but I even was turned off how every single stone un overturned uncovered some seedy, unsavory element. I totally understand. I yeah. agree. Because I, I think Cozy has said it a couple times. It wasn't just like one element. It was like another stone. Everything. Like <laughs> another stone unturned. And you're like, what? Now they're saying that this person committed suicide. Another stone unturned. What? You're talking about, you know, I, there was just. That was like, fun. Top. And it wasn't just like, I mean, so there was like even more elements of corrupt cops. So you had Maya's husband. Yeah. Who Maya's had ex husband. Yeah. For being a corrupt cop, she pretty yeah. much lost her job. Well, she didn't lose it, but because of the back, down, you know, yeah. backlash from her husband being guilty, which she had nothing to do with, she's now this private eye. But then you had the actual killer be Mateo, yeah, the corrupt, corrupt cop. cop, and then and then well, someone else, an ex corrupt cop, um, and it's. But this reminded me of remember how we said pin a dreadful could have been good, but they did too much. This book did too much, but I think it was done in a better way than Penny Dreadful. Penny Dreadful felt disjointed and all over the place. And like they were just trying to cram. This one I think was done in a cohesive way so that you, you focus on one thing and then you focus on a new thing. It wasn't everything thrown at once. Uh, but it right it, 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 funny it reminds me because I, I had a problem with Penny Dreadful. I was like, this is pushing it and it's too much and too much drama. And I just think it was a different writing style done a different way. Well, and in Penny Dreadful, not to get totally off topic on another book, but the thing with that book was, swear to God, I thought that book was ending like four different yeah. times. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I'm like, oh, okay, so that person's the killer. And yeah. then it was like something totally different happened. I, I, I Seriously, I thought it yeah. was ending four different I did, times. I did too, yeah. And that's where it felt disjointed. Right. Like, it's, it's, it was kind of like, oh, no, wait, I want to add this as opposed yeah. to it being like, flowing as part of the story like this right. one did to me. What Sped was saying, and I didn't realize it till after he said it, is it took him out of the story because when they would go to interview one suspect, they would say, okay, it's so you knew it wasn't that person right away because there's still this much time left in the book. So he wishes that they would have presented more suspects and then slowly work their way through them instead of just checking one off the list. Like, oh, we're going to interview with this person. I know it's not that person now. And I'm like, but sometimes they circle back and sometimes it is somebody that they already cleared. So I understand exactly what he was saying. Like it was mm -hmm. like a checklist almost. Um, <laughs> I just read somebody's comment. So Nancy said controversial issues are good because yeah. of reality, unfortunately. And again, I think what Cozy said is a big thing for me. I don't want this to be a, a, new, a new normal theme. No. I think the reason that I still enjoyed it was because of the shock value and that you never see it in Cozy's. And I think, yeah. I think Cozy has said that perfectly. I don't want this to be an ongoing theme. I don't want no. there to be 18 triggers in a Cozy. I no. really don't want there to be a whole lot ever. So I totally like what Susan's saying about the infidelity and the, you know, and, and Cozy, all of the, you know, trigger warnings you read. I don't remember all of them, but I remember the main one, you know, I mean, it's just, yeah. Um, I don't, I don't want to, that this to be like an opening a door no. to Pandora's box because that would actually really right. break my heart because it wouldn't be a cozy anymore. Exactly. So. Cause I thought this was definitely pushing. Like I, I said, if this was a new author, this would not be branded as a cozy mystery. This would not, but because it was a well-known, well-published author, I think they allowed it. So if this becomes a new thing, like, Oh, we need shock value. We need to push the envelope. I'm going to be like, no, stop. Like leave our cozies cozy. So that's why I knew this book would be very polarizing. I knew people would love it and I knew people would hate it. So Interesting. Sped said, I felt attacked as a male reading this. Every male in this book is painted in a very unsavory light. I agree yeah. with that. Um, the audiobook narrator's portrayal only enhanced that shade. Yeah. I agree with that. Yeah. Um, and I think it's very interesting. I kind of felt that way as a female reader. I kind of noticed that because the reason I noticed it. Maybe not that it was so prolific, which I agree with you. It was constant, but really why I noticed it is because Lee Hollis is a man. I mean, I mean, yeah. it's, it's a, I mean, it's a dual writer, but he does all of the writing. So yeah. like 
his sister. I don't even know if she's part of this. I don't think, I think, I don't think she was. I think she's only been a part of Haley Powell. Haley Powell. Written, and all yeah. she does in that is write the, the cocktail articles. Recipes. Yeah. And I don't mean all like the she flash. Do she does the like, flashback scene. She does the call. You know, that's it. Yeah. But so like, I thought it was the real, the reason that I noticed it, I, I totally feel what you're saying, but I noticed it because I thought it was so interesting because Lee Hall, this is a male. Yeah. Um, and it did seem like every male was written as an evil person. Yeah. And oh, as doing as, these, I don't know. Yeah. As I listened to it, because I read it the first time on ebook, and then as I listened to it, I noticed that he would describe women as beautiful and gorgeous, and then he'd describe a male as uh, greasy or fat or balding. And I'm like, wait, <laughs> like, and the only one that he kind of described a male as anything was Mateo, but then every, yeah, every male, like Joel, the dad, I want, I was rooting for Joel. I thought he was a good guy. And then Joel's whole storyline with the prostitution escort thing. I was like, whoa, that, and then him just kissing Sandra out of nowhere. Like I was rooting for Joel. I'm like, oh, he's like a good guy. And I got upset when Sandra went to the police and was like, I think Joel did it because she just, she, she rushed to the hospital when his son was there. She Who made overdosed on drugs. Yeah. Made, like made him a casserole was defending the Joel. And then all of a sudden Joel goes, I could wring her neck. I could wring the person's neck. Whoever did the gossip thing, dirty laundry. And then she goes straight to the cops and is like ratting on him. And I'm like, wait, I thought you were friends. And then so I was, I was upset, but then Joel turns around and does some unsavory stuff. And I'm like, dang, Joel, I was rooting for you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and then Sped said, I take that back. One suspect was doing a charity live stream. Which one was that? Maybe the senator? I don't know. No. Or something as their alibi. But that character had already been painted red for doing other misdeeds. I don't remember who that was. Maybe. She, Everybody maybe was that, painted red. Maybe was it Chelsea, the actress, the sister of the murder victim, maybe? Oh, we never said the murder victim. The murder victim was Maisie, the assistant principal, which I didn't see that coming. I did think whoever wrote the gossip uh, column was the murder victim but i didn't guess i thought maybe the murder victim in the the gossip thing would have been the principal was my intuition i agree switching to audio but <laughs> cackleberry <laughs> club number four i can't focus on me gotcha um oop i lost my spot sorry hold on um oh man I totally lost my, okay. Listening to Survival of the Fritters. Love it that it takes place here in Wisconsin about an hour and 40 minutes. Nice. The Cackleberry Club girls have stitch. Oh. <laughs> it so, made me laugh. <laughs> That's what they call it. She's like, I don't want to get off on that too much, yeah. but. I enjoy that series, but I think that that's a series that's really unrealistic. Yeah. And I also, Suzanne in that really rubs me the wrong way. And sometimes, not every book. How many have you sometimes read? Sometimes in books, huh? How many have you read? Um, At least three or four, but I don't remember okay. for sure. Because I'm on four and I really like her now. This is, it's funny. This is, I listen to the series on audiobook and I really enjoy it and I'm entertained with it. Um, it's not a four or five star series. Any, like it's some books. No, I have rated books four stars, but it's not like an amazing series. But if I would read this book on ebook, it would annoy me, annoy me and, bo and bore me. So I, it's a, definitely an audiobook series for me, but I'm really enjoying it. I like it. But I could see what you say about Suzanne, but I like her now. Um, Cheryl, that's cool. I didn't remember where it takes place. Oh, because it takes place hey, in, hey, home, yeah. Yeah, in Wisconsin. Uh, nice, Leanna, 12 pages. I also wanted to add that besides the cheating elements, it felt like the author was trying hard to make everything sexist. That's what that's what Sped was saying about how he felt attacked as a man. Yeah. 100%. I dream. I, I, I agree. I'm up to 40%. Nice. Up to 16%. I did like the two main female characters. I'm not sure the series will be at the top of my list to continue reading, which is fair. You know, I mean, talking about characters, I really liked Maya. Uh, I thought I think Sandra has potential, but she did really stupid things and she would annoy me at points. Um, I didn't like how she handled things and she would go on my nerve, but I really liked Maya. Um, being at the top of your list, if this book number two is already out, but it's a Barnes and Noble exclusive, if I had a Barnes and Noble near me, I would have immediately bought number two and read it because 
And see, that's what's crazy about this being a five star for me is because if like, it's only a five star just because how engaged I was into it and how how much it shocked me and how much it made me want to keep reading and kept me on the edge of my seat. But if we're breaking it down, it's not a five star, but it's going to be. So I can definitely see how people are having issues with it. I think what you're saying about Sanders is totally true, but I think that was done on purpose because she's yeah. coming into yeah. becoming a uh, you know, a member of the private eye. Like she started out as senator's wife who ne wasn't working, right? right? She well, just became president of the PTA. Yeah. Like she wasn't, she was a housewife. Mm -hmm. So there's nothing wrong with that. But what I'm saying is I think yeah. they wanted her to be a little bumbling because- like, like a bored housewife trying to play detective thing. Yeah. Right. But doesn't know exactly what she's doing. So she's going to bumble something. That's the way yeah. I kind of read oh, it. That's how, that's how I took it too. I knew that there, they, I was like, okay, oh, there's a dual perspective, you guys, if you didn't read it. So there's, it focuses on Maya and her storyline and Sandra and her storyline but then they interconnect too because their kids start dating they went to high school together stuff like that so I knew that there was going to be one character that was more likable than the other and I did enjoy both characters it's just at some point Sandra was making me eye roll like crazy and oh my oh. gosh wait, wait till we get to the shocking ending if you guys didn't read this oh my gosh for sure <laughs> made me roll my eyes not to do with the with the PI stuff yeah with the husband stuff, like somebody said earlier, I was like, yeah. yeah. That's like someone giving you 100% proof and you just act like it didn't exist. <laughs> I think for me, it's because um, I, I work with people who are in denial every day. Like yeah. I've literally can't tell you how many times I've held a drug test in front of somebody and it'll, it, I mean, it's an instant test. And they're like, no. And oh. they're like, no. And I'm like, <laughs> And how frustrating that is yeah. to listen to what are blatant lies. Like, I know you're, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I have proof that you're lying to but me. But you, you can't just, you, you have to be, it. and you have to be professional about it. And it's so frustrating. And so when I read it in the book, it made me immediately like triggered Yeah. And, uh, to that because I'm like, she's like literally looking at a picture of her husband. No. And I, it, it made me like feel like yeah so I this I, this book made me feel frustrated it made me feel shocked it made me feel angry it like it brought out so many emotions and that's what I love is when a book makes me feel emotions so um I read 18 pages in my cozy ish book <laughs> <laughs> yeah um I love the name of their meeting it made me laugh and that's why if you guys saw me laughing that's why I wrote it yeah I didn't read. I just got new Ooh. white, gold, and silver gel pens. Ooh, for book journals. So it was opening and trying them out there. Great. I hope awesome. we get to see them on the Discord. I've converted Nancy into a book journaler. I love it. <laughs> 19 pages of Blood oh. Promise, Vampire Academy number four. Oh, my gosh. When I read YA, Vampire Academy was one of my favorite series. I loved. I would actually reread that series. I loved it. There's six books. It was so good. I will be right back. I'm going to let you continue okay. the conversation, comments, whatever you prefer. I'll be right back. Okay. Uh, Susan, yes, over the top is correct. Unfortunately, not my taste. Yeah, exactly. Um, I knew that some people it was going to, and I agree it was over the top. It, it was too much drama, too many twists. But the fact that I'd never seen it before, I really enjoyed. But if it becomes a thing, like we said, I'm not going to like it because it doesn't belong in cozies. I don't. This, that's why I said this is an R-rated cozy, and it's just it, it's even borderline that it can be considered a cozy mystery, and it's definitely not traditional Lee Hollis. Like if you read the Haley Powell series, this is I, I went in not knowing what to expect. Um, I went I was expecting a traditional cozy, and so definitely I knew some of you guys would not enjoy it. And if I read this like if I see this done again, I'm not gonna like it as much as I did the first time. I read, Storm says, I read cozies for the sweet, no violence, et cetera. Uh, if I want that stuff, I'll read a regular mystery. Exactly. Yeah. And see, I only read cozies. So I think that's why uh, I liked it because it was so different. But then I don't want to read that stuff on a normal, normal basis. That's why I don't read traditional mis murder mysteries. I don't read thrillers because I don't want to see that all the time. I want cozy and fluffy. Um, but it, since it was the first time I read it in a, in the cozy mystery genre, I liked it, but I understand exactly what you're saying. 
uh, wait, did you say affair with his sister or the sister? The sister. So the principal has an affair with the sister of the murder victim. The murder victim's a vice principal. And um, the vice principal was Maisie and she was the murder victim and she wrote the uh, gossip column. And then the principal has an affair with Maisie's sister. Yeah, thank you, Hannah. <laughs> uh, Cheryl, I didn't care for the heavy petting and kissing between Maya. Walked in between the two teenagers. On this, uh, yeah, that, that was another thing. That was so weird. Her, uh, the teenagers were kissing and heavy petting on the couch. That was something you don't see. Um, that's me too, Storm. I read grittery mysteries. It don't bother me. Just don't want it in my cozies. Yeah, it was shocking to see for sure. Okay, Lee. Um, if not my vote. Okay. I'm gonna write that down. And then Breezy, I got your message for your vote. Sped every suspect turned into an elimination loop versus having multiple running suspects. Yeah. I didn't notice that in the moment until you pointed it out to me that, yeah, as soon as he got, they got talking to someone, you're like, well, I know it's not this person, but authors have been known to like circle back. So you can put somebody in the clear with an alibi, but then it does turn out to be that person. So I wasn't sure. And then we're on Cajun Peach. She says, I want my cozies to be fluff, well-written fluff with murder, but not intense like this, what it seems. Yeah. I, I do too. I completely agree. Um, I had never seen it done before, but if it keeps happening, I'm not going to like it. And then we're on Nancy at three at 59. Oh, go for it. Okay. Um, I agree. It shouldn't be the norm. That's not why people choose cozies as there are plenty in other genres. Yeah, definitely not. Holy Nancy. I agree. There's genre for that. And I like it time to time, but not in cozies. That Sped. Yeah. 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 It doesn't. I like that he was pushing the envelope, but he did push it a little too far for sure. Um, and I, yeah, so I don't, there are some, some cozies that are too fluffy and too like unrealistic. And you're like, uh, like this is just too much. Um, no, there's there, not. Yeah. There is. Uh, no. so I, I like when some of them are different. This was very different. Um, very different. It was. Sped drop out the the escort element and the principal's infidelity in it would have been at slightly more acceptable and realistic frequency of scumminess. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it, see that's the thing when you when I re listen to it when you take out the shock value there's not much plot to it the whole plot is shocking you like from one thing to the next. Um, so. I, yes. Yeah. And that's why I said my like redoing it twice, my rating would drop to a three star, but I'm not going to because my first my first rating and before I dissected it with Sped was a five. So um, I agree with Sped about the men being portrayed badly. Yes. Janelle. Hi, guys. This is my first live. Hi, Janelle. Hi. It's good what, to have you. What books do you like to read? Do you want to take over? I'm not used to talking this much. Sure. <laughs> sure. And I totally agree with Sped, too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I feel like there were too many elements of scumminess. <laughs> nice word. Um, and I felt like, I, and I said this before, I really did feel like the men were were um, portrayed in a, like every man in the story was portrayed in what felt like a very poor light. Um I, yeah, it was interesting. So now that we're dissecting it, are you going to change your rating or are you going to keep it the same, you think? Um, no, I'm going to, I'm going to keep it the same, but I guarantee you, and we've hit on this, if, if I read the next book and there's this much going on, not only will it be a lower rating, I probably won't continue because right. I don't want this to be a ongoing thing in any cozy series. Right. I, I do hope that there's a little bit of shock value in number two because you can't go to polar opposite, but I don't want it to be as much as this either. Yeah. Um, yep. 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 Oh, Sped, you need to join us more often, buddy. <laughs> oh, Janelle again. Hello, Janelle. Nice but to see you. I, I'm curious. I asked if he had time to read Uninvited Corpse. We're going to see. Um, but yeah, I want to see what he thinks of. I think he'll be really bored by a normal cozy, but I don't know because he dissects everything. 
Uh, I agree with Sped all uh, that all the men except the coach. Oh yeah, had some type of major flaw. I like the coach. Yeah, and he was so sweet at the very end, and when she went to see him, and yeah. Um, the principal was doing a live okay. stream. Thank you, Susan G. I don't remember that. I don't, but, I don't either. Um, thank you. There was oh. so much. I kind of do now that you said it, but I mean. Yeah. And I listened you, twice. Or I read twice. Yes. <laughs> I thought so, too. We talked about that. Absolutely. And they're like, absolutely. Mom, Mom, are you in a play or something? <laughs> yes, Absolutely. The creepy stalker IT guy at the police department. Yeah, that I didn't like that part either. And I heard you guys um, talking a little bit when I was off about even the teenagers making out and mm -hmm. like, you know, they started dating and she catch Maya catches them. And then she's like, well, you need to find your own way home. And he's like, I don't have money or something for yeah. a and so she calls and his she's mom. Like, oh. She's like, you need to come pick up your son. <laughs> yeah, that's why this whole book is shock value. When you take away the shock value, it's kind of a weak plot. So, yeah, yeah. The creepy I, uh, stalker yeah. IT guy. Yeah. Like his, his password was, I. who said, whose password yeah. is I love? It was like Oliver, whatever his name was, loves Maya. Sand yeah. Loves, um, oh, Maya. I was thinking Sandra, but no, Maya was the yeah. former uh, cop. Um, yeah, that was totally uh Sped bot. That was creepy. And I I didn't that. like how Maya was using him either. Like she she he she knows that he likes her, and so she's taking advantage of it. And it's like, and he was painted in a bad light. Like they called him short and chubby or something. I'm like, and like he was super creepy. And I'm, but Sandra or Maya didn't handle that well either. Um, Sped said Jack and his football coach are the only guys immune to the male smearing. But Jack is gay, so. That is probably his excuse. I did like that they had they had gay characters and some I diversity. Too. I mean, it was just yeah. mentioned, but um, yeah. like that he had came out as a teenager. Yeah, and yeah. I liked that she was okay with it. Like I, yeah. I you know what I mean? Like I, I was happy, and her husband, and, who is and the husband, was okay, was okay with, it. with it, right? Yeah. Like I really, really liked that. And she said that the boy who overdosed mm -hmm. was like a uh, one that came out and was really supportive of her yeah. son and how much she appreciated that, which is why she liked Joel. And that whole thing was weird too. Like you were talking about, but yeah, she turned um, on Joel and then Joel turned yeah. out weird. Um, yeah. The way we're talking about this book, it makes it sound like we don't like it. That's what's so funny about it. I liked Maya for the most part, minus some logic stuff late in the book. Sandra was a roller coaster. Sandra's <laughs> last act in the book was very unlikable and shows little to no growth. Oh my gosh. So where are we where are we gonna let's can we get to who the killer was for the people that didn't read it? We didn't Go even mention it. this. Okay. So the very basic storyline. Sandra is a senator's wife. Maya is a private and get investigator. She's an ex-cop. Maya has a partner named Francis. Francis is Maya's best friend. My uh, Francis is pregnant and an ex cop and a private investigator. She's like super pregnant too, right? A yes. So yes. so she can't really work much anymore because she's pregnant. So Sandra is like trying to like get in and on the investigation, and Francis seems unlikable. But I just picture that as she's Sandra doesn't know what she's doing, and she uh, Francis feels like Sandra's trying to take over for her. Yes. And Francis is tired of being pregnant, so she's moody. And there's a cop named Mateo and he's a, seems like a sexist jerk and he doesn't really investigate the murder much. It's, it's just the main character is investigating. Right. Well, when you get to, and the murder victim was the assistant principal and she was writing a gossip website called dirty laundry. Dirty and, laundry. and in this, they expose that uh, Sandra's husband, the Senator is in a sex scandal, hush money type of thing. Um, and they expose other stuff. Well, it turns, turns out that the killer is not, is, is a team. Like, I don't remember exactly who did the killing, but they're, they're in it together is not only the cop Mateo, but her pregnant best friend partner. 
And, and I never suspected Francis at all because I'm like, they're not going to do that. They're not going to make the pregnant best friend the fr part of the killing. Like that was insane to me. That was the roller coaster that I was talking about. So I'm like, oh, it's a dirty cop. That's cool. We don't see it that often. Normally it's the cop trying to solve the crime. But then when they threw in the Francis part, her pregnant best friend, it blew my mind. Like did not see that coming. Like that's what I actually really liked about it was that they – they held nothing back because you're like, no, it's not going to be the pregnant lady. <laughs> I even thought that at one point. I'm like, no, it can't. She's just moody. Like, like, did that shock you? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. It really, really shocked me. Um, when it started looking like Francis, I still didn't think it was going to be that. I and I thought it was going to be the coach. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like when she saw the phone number, they find my they find uh, Maisie's phone, and it's and she's like, I know that number. It's Francis. Yeah, it could be the coach. The, I, coach, that, the coach is Francis's baby daddy, and the Maisie was in the middle of she was going to expose uh, the crooked cops, and the crooked cop is you know uh, Francis is in on the crooked cops because she's an ex cop and she was corrupted, mm -hmm. and she's tied to the coach and the coach. Uh, is Vinny, I think. And he loved his job and he's a great guy. And she's about to have a baby. So she doesn't want to ruin their lives. And so Macy that, at one point was, was she was used to Vinny. date. She used to date Vinny, but and so then she was saying that he was a horrible coach and racist and yeah. All, and, like, and Francis supposedly didn't know about it, but maybe she did. Right. Yeah. But when I, when, when it started looking like Francis, I thought the twist was going to be the coach. Yeah. I never, I never, expected ever, Francis, ever thought it would be that. First of all, take out the fact that she was like nine months, pregnant, eight months pregnant, like ready to pop pregnant. Yeah. But somebody so close, her to best friend and her business partner. Yeah. And what I thought would be a central character in the entire series. Right. Like I thought, you know what I mean? Like I thought it was going to be a three man team. I was, I mean, I can't tell you how shocked I was. Yeah. Well, well, Storm goes, it's called the, the Maya and Sandra mystery. But I'm like, yeah, but I thought Francis was going to have the baby and then retire or something. Like, I'm going to take a maternity leave. And so Sandra takes over for a bit. That's what I said. I never expect Francis to be in on the murder. No. Ever. Was this actually marketed as a Yes. Book? Yes. <laughs> yes. Or is it the key together and author people? No. Uh, let me look at the tags on Goodreads. That's why I said it, 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 a new author, this would not be a cozy. I don't care what anybody says. So Sped said, let's, sh let's say she had stepped completely off the train, not just stepped out for fresh air. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. Oh, Sped, I wish you could come to all these. You just got to <laughs> Except we're going to get a book that we love and is like, traditional and he's going to rip it apart. <laughs> True, true, true. true no, I true. love that he's he made me look at the book in a different way, and I, I although it upset me, I do like that. But I and will I, say, I like debate. As, I don't want everybody to love it. It's not going to be fun if everybody loves it. And as much as I've enjoyed the knockouts and the discussion, I don't want to analyze books to the point where we have no. any. No, I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to do call pile. It's not. It takes it away. I just want to talk about our feelings about it. Because Cop Pile um, makes you break down. Um, for anybody interested, uh, Murder at the PTA by Lee Halls is genres are cozy mystery, mystery, fiction, and contemporary. And that's it. Storm said, I liked Maya, but not Sandra. I might give number two a try, but no rush to get to it. I'm very curious about two. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Dream, I agree. Yep, bro. I'm totally a book journal. Um. Awesome. Leanna said this was so mild compared to hardcore mysteries. Oh, really? Yeah. So, so this is that's it's still considered a cozy. So she's saying that this was mild compared to you know other mysteries. That it's it, it just it 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 touched the sub all these subjects. It never went in. There was sex on the page. There wasn't you know uh, lots of cussing and stuff like that. But it was hinted at for sure. Uh, Which but we're isn't just saying. Usual. But we're just saying this is a, a R-rated cozy. So that's why a lot of people are having issues with it because it's so pushing the thing. Like Elizabeth, I think she would have hated this if she read it. Yes. A lot of people like, yes. yeah. 
Yes. Yes, absolutely. A hundred percent agree. And I bet um, you there's some old grandmas that are like, Oh my uh, gosh, what is this? <laughs> murder at the PTA. Gotcha. Okay. We're going to get um, to our vote in a, in a minute. Oh, Janelle said, I like to read everything from cozies to two. Oh, Prime. Awesome. Prime. So now you got to tell us what, what cozies you like. Yeah. Thank you. What series you, you really like to read. It's funny because in listening to Lee himself, <sighs> he's just so nice. But he yeah. did work in Hollywood, so maybe not so shocking for him. Right. He was, I will still say this, I've enjoyed every interview I've done, and I really have. He is one of my favorites Right. that I did. I just, I loved him. I loved the entire interview. I mean, I may be biased because he wrote on Golden right. Girls, but I'm just saying. You got to look at it this way. He's wrote, he's written 14 books for Haley Powell. I think he wanted to change a pace a little bit. Did he take it too far? Yes. Let's hope he reins it in some. But I think he just, you know, it's you don't want to get burnt out. It's creative freedom. He wanted to experiment a little bit and see how people respond to it, probably. Sped, yeah. you couldn't make the coach a scumbag because he ends up being a victim in his own way. This is oh, yeah. very true. And when they get to the ending, uh, you know, Francis goes to jail and they turn out it's going to be, they're having a girl and uh, the coach, her, uh, the baby daddy is going to take care of the daughter. So we might see that in the second book. And and I, and I thought that was really sweet when she goes yeah. and visits him and he's talking about his parents helping and they're going to, you know. Yeah. Um, and he goes, this isn't the Francis I know. Like he was really, I felt really upset for him. I, I felt sad for him. I really, really did. He was yeah. definitely a victim in that. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah. I really don't remember a lot about <laughs> this book, but the stuff I hated. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Star. I liked Maya, but Sandra for the most part got on my nerves. Can totally see that. I would hope she got better. Um, it took her long to kick Steven's butt out of the house. And she didn't even get better. This is the ending. So it ends with, so we, at this point we know for a fact, her husband uh, has had affairs and he's had a hush money scandal. So she draw she flies to Washington, DC. So I'm like, yes, yeah, she's going to confront him. She's going to say, I'm here giving you divorce papers. She goes, I want a separation. And he, and that's it. And then she's like, he goes, well, I'm, I want to work on our marriage. And she's like, I, I need time. And he goes, okay, I'll stay in a hotel here or the penthouse here, whatever. And then it flashes back, it flashes to a scene of them all having dinner. And she's like, oh yeah, I talked to Steven a few times when, when I'll pick up the phone. But I'm like, no, you need to flat out say, give this dude divorce papers. Tell him, I know for a fact you're with a drama teacher. I know this, I know this. I, the thing that drove me nuts <laughs> is the whole confrontation with him. He was like, well, why would you feel that way? And she never said, no, because I know you're having an affair with the drama teacher. I saw pics. She never even said no. that at all. He's just no. like, I don't understand. And he, you know, he acted like, but she never, nope. I was like, I hated that scene. It made me yeah. so angry that yeah. she never was like, look, dude, I know because he was just like still playing so innocent. He's like, I don't understand Sandra, why you would feel this way. Let's I want to work therapy. on things. Like, oh. yeah. And she never like, no. I couldn't believe it. I was like, why wouldn't you? I thought, okay. So in that scene, I thought she was going to start walking out the door and say something like, and by the way, tell blah, blah, blah. I said, hello, or something that led you or led him to understand that she knew about the affair with the drama teacher. Never, never mentioned it yeah. whatsoever, whatsoever. I was so mad at that scene. Maybe I didn't like this book. As much as I <laughs> See, that's a bad thing about, that's a bad thing. I just told you that my rating, if I pick it apart, goes from a five to a three. That's the bad thing about being a critical <sighs> reader. But it, it's a good. so angry. And Sped said that the part he was saying where she fell off the train was that because he's like, yeah, she's going to get a, a backbone. And then all of a sudden she's just like, I want a separation. But I'm like, you're married to a senator. You're going to get alimony. You're going to get child support. You can make it on your own. I think she's scared. I think she's scared to push the envelope. I don't uh. So, And if in book two, this is a, if it's a no deal. In book two, if she starts to try to take him back, I'm done. Like with her as a character. Hmm. <sighs> I well and and I hundred percent agree just because I am totally again yeah I mean yeah. I know that's personal people people's personal beliefs but I cannot get behind her I don't want to say too yeah. much because I don't want to feel like I'm judging someone but I agree right. with what you just said hundred percent right there are um, women in in, in uh, messed up marriages that have a hard time getting out for sure yeah we're not shaming anybody we're just we wanted her to 
stand up for herself. Um, Storm said, I guess the Francis thing. So I wasn't shocked. I'm shocked that you guessed the Francis thing, not because it's you, but yeah. because anybody guessed the Francis. You, thing you guessed a pregnant, to. your pay, pregnant best friend, business partner. Like that's unheard of. Like even a cop is unheard of in cozies most of the time, but that like anybody that guessed, like I was like, I was like, no, they couldn't. At, well, it had an inkling in my brain, but I'm like, they can't do that. Like no one, no one would do that, but leave it to him to do that i gasped but i gasped too i i was talking out loud to my husband and i'm like oh my god they made it the pregnant best friend partner uh i was uh, i was shocked when they were, had the killer reveal <laughs> my boss gave me an odd look <laughs> i guess i didn't see that <laughs> um oh i lost my spot again um, the smelly rag gossip <laughs> the dirty, dirty laundry. <laughs> dirty laundry. He called it the smelly rag. Yes. Yeah, so. Which is hilarious. Um, the senator news story was completely time warped. The Washington Post is months behind the smelly rag. Come on. Oh, yeah. She gets in the car after she says that she wants a separation and it, she gets an alert from the newspaper. And I'm like, oh, great. Sandra put in. Here's the here's her redemption. Sandra put in a thing about her husband and the affairs and the hush money. No, it was just the the Washington uh, Post uh, that the reporters that were on her front lawn. It's just them now running their story. I thought maybe Sandra put a story in, but nope. And then Cheryl, Francis, and never cross my... Yeah, it seems so unbelievable. Like, never. If you're a cozy mystery reader, that's unheard of. See, I, I really didn't. Yeah. Well, with him saying that, it's because there was kind of an inkling with Maya at one point. She was questioning the coach. She was questioning Vinny at one point. Mm -hmm. And then they never furthered that. But I'm like, that's the same thing as like, because you don't want to question your best friend or your best friend's partner. Like, so, but then he said his new, as soon as that happened, where they broke the formula of like going to investigate one person, crossing them off the list that he had a feeling it would be her. Yeah, that's what she was talking about. Thinking, hmm, it's not a Maya and Francis mystery, so I bet she is up to something. Yeah, see, I thought it was going to be her having the baby and saying, I don't want to be a private investigator anymore. That's what I thought, and that's how I thought Maya and Sandra got together. Oh, and then at the end of the book, they're having dinner, and Maya asked Sandra to be a partner, but not an well, official no, no, partner. Not a partner. She so, asked her to work, but Sandra yeah. calls herself a partner. Yeah, she's like, she's like, I need help with the cases, but this isn't an official partner thing. And then Sandra's like, oh, excited. I'm going to be. It's like, yeah, to me, she tells her kids, she's like, guess what? I was asked to be partner. It reminded me <laughs> of, a, of, of Hannah Swinson and her sister cooking dinner together type of thing, where like the, the sister's so excited she gets to help cook dinner type of thing. Yeah. Doesn't two come out around the holidays? I do not know. Uh, number two is already out. It's a Barnes & Noble exclusive. It comes out on ebook, audiobook, and everywhere else uh, November 30th. I looked it up because I'm, like, excited <laughs> to read it. My vote is for murder at the PTA. Okay, I'll that Going now. to say goodnight. Bye, Nancy. Bye, See Nancy. you tomorrow. I hope it was enjoyable. It was shocking. If Lee wants a change of pace, write a mystery, not a cozy. True. Storm reads so many other things. I'm a little surprised. I mean, I get it, but I'm just like, yeah, I thought Storm might like it a little bit. I'm like, I know she's not going to like the fart, the fact that the murder doesn't place, take place till 28%, but I didn't, I thought she'd like all the action and drama and suspense. Only because she reads outside of cozy realm way more right. than, but I think a lot of that, she, I think she's like, no, this is not cozy. And so it automatically took down her enjoyment from it. I understand. If I would have done that, it would have took down my enjoyment. I just read it as what it was. Everybody saying good night. I'm kind of new to the cozy scene, but I enjoy it. But I did enjoy the few Lucy Stone mysteries I've read. Awesome. Gotcha. Uh, we have a Discord server you can find on the channel, and Tiffany can link it. And we we talk all about cozy mysteries, and we have lots of recommendations. And somebody is always on there. I think between the time differences that everybody's and the fact that some people don't sleep on there. I mean, <laughs> that's, that's not going to be me. If you say something past like 9 p.m., I'm probably not seeing it till the next And morning. you crazy people are talking at 5 a.m. my time. Like Nancy's like, good morning. I'm like, I just went to bed an hour ago my time. <laughs> yeah. Oh, because, yeah, I go to bed so early. I'm getting up. Yeah. Oh, well, totally. it's eight. No, it's eight o'clock for you guys, but it's five o'clock for me, like in the morning when I see you guys start talking. 
Yeah. Um, and sometimes I'm on there even earlier. That's why I'm saying, like, Janelle, somebody's always on there talking about cozy mysteries. Yeah. And I read, no I read nothing but cozy mysteries, so I got a lot of suggestions. <laughs> Oh, I, oh, that's my favorite thing to do is make yeah. recommendations. So, um, yeah, I wish Sandra had confronted Steven, but I think she has been in this comfortable relationship for so long. Yeah. She was scared to confront him. Then that's why go? She flew all the way yeah. to Washington. You can at least call she, him on the phone. Yeah. And then it was so anticlimactic. That's what exactly. annoyed me. And I, 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 I understand what you're saying, Susan. I even agree with it. It still made me mad. Yeah, I said the same thing. I think she was scared to end it. But the way that she did it, like Tiffany said, I thought for sure I was expecting her to just put divorce papers and be like, turn around and be like, hey, I know you're with so and so like flat out and then walk out like in a boss moment. But no, nope. especially when he was like, I don't understand. Yeah. I, don't understand. Like, I mean, like, I just, she goes, I just need time. And I'm like, <laughs> It's hard to go against years yeah. of covering for a husband. Yeah, it's very hard. She's been with him for a long time. She has children with him. I understand that completely. I and and I understand that completely. But she had already like decided she was separating. Yeah. So my thing with it was not telling him why and that you knew what he was doing, especially when the right. butthole kept saying. I don't understand. Like what, acting, what's acting wrong with their marriage. Like, he was acting innocent. Even yes. at, and then the fact that she never pushed it. I hope in the second book, it starts out with like her just being like, I'm divorcing him or something. If Sandra tries to take Steven back, I am probably <laughs> going to fight a book. <laughs> yeah, that's what I said. I'm going to be, I fish, I'm going to be done at that point. Oh, unless, he, unless he admits to everything and does, I don't know. I don't know. He doesn't, he can't really redeem himself at that point. There has been killer cops and cozies before. Uh, yeah, there, there's, I, that's definitely, it's rare, but it's not a big thing. Normally the cop is, um, invest, normally the cop suspects the main character. It's never the other way around where the cop, mm -hmm. this, this cop was in the background. That's why I was suspicious of him at certain points because he wasn't prevalent at all. Um, and when he was, he was just being a jerk. So yeah, there wasn't much investigating at all on his behalf whatsoever. Um, I don't know if I've ever read a co cozy where the cop I'm was trying, there. There was, that. there was one I read recently and I can't think of the name of it where the cop was involved, but it's rare. It's rare. So that's why I, I said, if you would, if you would have just said the cop, that I'd be like, whoa, it would have shocked me. But when you threw in the pregnant best friend, that's what really shocked me too. Yeah, I mean, I, Francis was, you know, very jealous or or right. afraid that, you know, Sandra was going to take her place. That's what I felt like she was coming from. And was, also nine, nine months, nine months pregnant and moody as heck. So that's why I thought she was unlikable at times, but then times she was funny too. So like, I just pictured it all as hormones and as, oh, he wants to join the discord. Uh, send me your discord on, uh, on text, on messenger. But and please don't dissect every cozy you read. <laughs> <laughs> or every cozy I read. <laughs> Um, because I read cozies from my nice fluff to get away from the grittier stuff I read makes total sense. Yeah. Yeah. Makes right. total sense. Exactly. That's why I knew, I knew for a fact that this was going to be polarizing. I will join <laughs> and leave my smelly socks everywhere and my deodorant on the kitchen counter and all the other things Owen's mom complained about. His, his son's mom. Yeah. We, we, you'd be the first male presence we have there. So. Yeah. When I see people talking at four in the morning, I'm like, whoa. I'm with That's you. That's how I feel when I see you guys. Like, I'll hear my 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 phone makes it like a bleep. Yeah, it'll me be and like, Cheryl will be on it'll be like midnight, 1 a.m. It'll yeah. be like 1 a.m. And people are like, who wants to do a sprint? I'm like, uh, you I've gotta, been asleep for like five hours. You got to like think 9 one, 1, 1 a.m. for you is 10 p.m. for me. That's still past my bedtime by an hour. <laughs> I don't wake up and I like to me, I don't come alive until like 7 p.m. I'm like a zombie all day long until like nightfall. And then I'm like, oh, let's do sprints. <laughs> I can't well, read in the morning. 
Janelle said, right now I'm reading The Quiet Girl by S.F. Kosa, and I'm reading Sunrise Over Sunset Bay by Holly Martin. I love that title. As a buddy read with my sister. Cool, 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 cool. Sunrise Over Sunset Bay. That sounds like it could be a cozy, but I don't think it is. That's a nice title. It yeah. sounds like it's like um, a Chicklet. somewhat of a romance or like a, yeah. like a women's fiction to me. Same storm. Cozies are a nice break from the other books on my TBR. <laughs> I'm definitely not going to attempt to read Murder at the PTA. I thought you yeah. started it at one point. Or maybe you just said you were and never started it. Yeah, he was. Totally, Cheryl. From every scene that we saw him in. In your favorite Amish series book one, um, the cop was a killer. She's like, I can picture her saying it. In your favorite series. <laughs> uh, touche, Storm. Touche, 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 touche. Yep. Um, I was just about to say that storm. Mm. You know, yeah. I'm the opposite, Hannah. Fiction or mystery. Um, mysteries are a break from my cozies. <laughs> to me, this book was a break from, from traditional cozies. <laughs> For sure. LOL, I never whether, know whether to say good morning um, to everyone <laughs> or good afternoon. I always go by my time and then like I mean, I get because like when I say good morning to you, I'll say it's good morning. morning. It's yeah. not morning for you. And I know that. But I'm like, it's morning for me. So I just say good morning. I totally with you. Yeah. Lee says I'm back. OK, so, yeah, we're, we we were discussing where at the PTA. We haven't even voted yet, but I got yours down. See, that's oh, why I don't I'll go and look at Blake's real quick. Yeah, keep I have I have Stephanie. I have Breezy. I have Lee and I have Nancy. Uh, for their votes and it's two and two for each one so that's nice see that's why i don't like dissecting this so but i think you should change your rating if you want to i feel like you want to give it a four um hold on one second i'm sorry i'm trying to find like on here okay i i wouldn't come into your discord and rip apart cozies any more than i would walk into a build a bear and start shredding teddies <laughs> thank you <laughs> He's funny. <laughs> uh, there's, there is a teddy bear cozy mystery series. I want, really want to read. It looks really cute. <laughs> I didn't like it. Oh, you tried it? The teddy bear shop one? A long time ago, if it's the one you're talking about. It's like the adorably cute teddy bear series or something. It's something weird. Kind of like that. Um, oh, we're not. Okay. Okay. Well, I guess everybody wants to vote. Okay. Okay. Um, so look at, hold on, let Tiffany tell me hers, hers on the Discord first. Tell me who, what Blake said. Oh, Blake said uh, murder at the PTA is her vote. And is that the only one you have? Um, yeah. I'm going to check my Discord, make sure, okay, I don't have anybody else. Okay, so um, let's do everybody's votes first and then we'll do yours and mine. Because I'm curious what you're going to vote for. Because I still don't know what based on all this. <laughs> I thought I knew, but now I don't know. Okay, so Cajun. Wait, we had a vote earlier up, I think. Um, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll go back up and look. Okay, I think it was Nancy. But I need you to tell me because I'm going to write it down. So uh, let's start at Peach then. Nancy said murder at the PTA, but I'm yeah, going to keep going back got, up. I feel like somebody else did too. Right. I got Nancy. I got Lee. And I got Blake at Murder the PTA as write-ins. And I got Stephanie and Breezy as write-ins on... Uh... Leanna said Murder at the PTA. Okay, so... Up top here. Okay. I'll keep going up. You keep going and writing from okay. the other direction. Well, now I'm just doing tallies. I'm not doing people's names, so... So, Leanna, you said Murder at the PTA. Okay. I'm just making sure that nobody at the more towards yeah. the beginning said anything. And Sped, since you, you only you only read one, you can vote. He listened to the whole thing. You can vote based on what we said. So if you if you want to vote the other book that you didn't read, you can do that too. Anybody is allowed to do that. Anybody's allowed to change their mind and only vote for whatever just based on our discussion okay so so i got the right in votes and the only one you told me so far was leanna right so now we should be on peach 
Yeah, I'm all the way to the top, so we're good to go. Okay, so Cajun Peach, do you see where she's at? Uh, I vote for the cat. Okay. Okay, I'm okay, going so, back down. So tell me at uh, Susan. Okay, so Susan voted for the cat. Okay. Uh, Leanna voted for PTA. Oh, I already gave you Leanna. Got it. Yeah, she's. I'm um, not Cheryl said cat. Cheryl says cat. Okay. I can all. I only read murder at the PTA, but I vote for. So Dream said okay. cat. Awesome. I like when you guys switch. So Hannah said murder at the PTA. Okay. Um, Sped said I have to vote for murder at the PTA, even though I didn't read uh, kit the whole cat caboodle. Okay, so interesting. Uh, Even though he ripped it apart, he's voting for it. Okay. See, and that's what I was like. Because it makes you the premise emotion. of the other one. I just Maybe. wonder why. Maybe. Uh, that's why I said I was like, you're not gonna like a traditional. <laughs> okay. Storm said, um, yeah, cat. And yeah, Caboodle Storm. You would have you would have shocked me. Um, vote for whole cat and caboodle. Uh huh. Um, okay. vote for whole cat and caboodle. Okay, is that everybody? Oh. Any, do we have any silent viewers that have been watching and listening uh, that you would like to just vote and disappear again? <laughs> Which is fine. Yeah. Absolutely fine. Um, so what is your vote? Okay. my I enjoyed both oh. of them. I think these sh can both win, right? In, in, in different books. I think they both deserve to win. I think they're both great books. But based on my overall investment and reactions to the books, it has to be Murder at the PTA. So even though there's faults in it, for sure, I just was so invested in this book that it has to win for me. Even though I I, I like Murder uh, Cat Caboodle. Okay, so that's my vote. I just wrote down. Uh, Hello. Uh, okay, thank you. So we got um, another. Edel Beck said Murder at the PTA. Hello, how are you? See, this, the, um, si the silent watchers, me calling them yes, out. Thank, thank you. you for, thank you for um, voting. For voting. Feel free um, to chat or feel free to watch whatever you want to do. Okay. So, so what's your I, vote? I am voting. We're at a tie right now, by the way. <laughs> oh, okay. I just realized we're at a tie. Both eight votes. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. I hate to be the tiebreaker. I, I'm very curious what you vote for. Because um, so between the enjoyment. Okay. So let me let me say I'm going to vote for the whole cat and caboodle. Okay. And here's why. Although between these two books, I kind of enjoyed Murder at the PTA more. Yes. I think it was pure shock value. That's and as I far think. as a cozy, I think the whole cat and caboodle is hands down. Yes. The better cozy. Yeah. And I can't vote for Murder at the PTA to win over a traditional cozy. Right. And move on. I, I don't feel like. It should, win a bat it should win a battle of cozies. Yeah. I agree completely. Uh, that's what I said. I said, if you take away the shock value of murder at the PTA, it's not a strong cozy, as strong as a cozy mystery as whole cat caboodle. And it should not be put against a traditional cozy and for it to win in a cozy mystery battle. I agree, but I had to vote for it. I didn't think murder at the PTA would win. So I didn't. So, yeah. So there we go. We got nine for, I agree with that segment. Yeah. So nine for whole cat and caboodle and eight for murder at the PTA. This was our closest yet. I think um, I, I am, I am glad whole cat and caboodle won. Uh, Cause I agree exactly what you said. Snuck in a switcher. He did. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody who hasn't read Haley Powell, can you please read the first Haley Powell book? And yeah. you're going to be like, this is the same author. <laughs> you totally are. Totally, totally, totally. Um, okay. So awesome. now, Now's the fun part. Yes. So the whole cat and caboodle wins. Yay. Mm -hmm. It will face off against which one won the last round. Okay. I'll give a quick recap. We started this on our first month. We did culinary, which was Penny Dreadful versus uh, Cobblered to Death. Penny Dreadful or Cobblered to Death won. Mm -hmm. Gosh, I need my notebook. No, no, no. no. Penny Dreadful won. <laughs> Penny Dreadful won. I was like, I need my notebook to confirm. And then we had uh, Craft. And I wasn't there, you, but I'm pretty sure. Oh Wait, then we had, do we had craft or books? Books. Then we had books. So we had books. and that, I need my notebook. <laughs> the, so I don't remember what the two books were, but Books Can Be Deceiving by yeah. Jen McKinley 1. I know, but I want to say the books. Hold on, hold on. And Crafts was last month. So books was 
books was round two and it was books can be deceiving by um and okay so my, so may was books we had books can be deceiving by jen mckinley versus crime and poetry oh, duh amanda flower by amanda flower and books can be deceiving won that in uh june which i did not participate because i was in a bad reading slump we had craft which had murder she knit by peggy Earhart. that went against yarn to go by betty hechtman the winner of that was yarn to go i took the votes in the comments when you guys were talking about it so our first two round winner was books can be deceiving so now we're going to vote from yarn to go our craft winner to our wild card winner, Whole Cat Caboodle. And we'll go from there. All right. So it's right now, it's the Whole Cat and Caboodle versus Yarn to Go. Yes. Let me get a fresh uh, piece of paper. We'll vote last. Oh, okay. So we want, do you guys want to um, do an, another quick sprint or are we going to vote? It's almost five, but I can keep going a little bit because this is exciting. Um, that whichever is fine with me. If you guys, I'm, I'm up for another sprint, but we're almost at three hours. So if you yeah, guys, are let's, just, for it, yeah. let's just keep, um, keep going. Um, Uninvited Corpse is our book club book. We haven't read that yet for this okay. month. So we're yeah. talking about it next Saturday. Sped the Uninvited Corpse, which you can try. To read. Can try to read. Oh, when next is the Saturday. deadline? Uh, next Saturday at 4 p.m. Yeah, the 24th. And that, and I did say 4 p.m. That is Eastern time. Yes. We do um, book club an hour earlier. Maybe I'll just, no. <laughs> God. Oh. He got so into it. And I was like, see, it made you feel emotion. <laughs> oh, man. Um, let's just, let's just do a vote and then um, we'll wrap it up probably. All right. So, so. What is your guys' vote between the whole cat and caboodle? Hold on, and, let me write. Let me write and, down caboodle. We're not going to have our write-in votes, but we're just going to have to do with the people in the chat. Okay, um, and caboodle and uh, books can be deceiving. No, no, no. Oh no. The craft. The craft like one. Too intense. Which was yarn to go? Right. Let me double check. Yarn to go. Are we hundred percent on that? Yeah, yarn to go one, right? Yeah, yarn I'm just like yarn I'm like one. Yarn to go, yes. <laughs> Made me feel. I'm angry. like getting. I'm like getting too excited about this. Okay, so yarn. This is four months in the making, you guys. We've been doing this for four months. This has been cultivating <sighs> for a long time. Okay, so we'll give you our votes last again. Uh, so let's start. And any silent viewers, again, please vote because we're have less people this time. So, um, Hannah. Oh, next week. Yeah, that's okay. Okay. He's reading it right now. We still want to know. Will you still tell us what you rate it? Like, um, Which just one? send me a message oh. what you rated it before next week. Cool. 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 So, Leanna said yarn to go. Okay. Hannah said the whole cat and caboodle. Okay. Um, Cajun said yarn to go because I've read that one. Fair enough. You don't, you don't have to do that. If you think our debate on, Cat and Caboodle was better than what you read. You can choose, uh, switch it. So I won't do yours just yet. Um, Sophia <laughs> said, I didn't read either book, but whole Cat and Caboodle, because there's a cat named Elvis. Hey, Fair hey, enough. Any logic is good. That's fine, Dream. Which one Which one do you want to vote for? We, I, I just want to vote. Because there's a lot okay, of us. I'm really not going to lie. The reason I wanted to go last is because we went last before, but also because I really don't know which one I'm going to vote for. Oh, really? Between the yarn to go and the whole cat and caboodle. Really? I thought you didn't like yarn to go that much. Hmm. Okay, we only got three votes, you guys. Does, can anybody else vote? Sped, did you watch the yarn to go one? Uh, Lee said uh, yarn to go. Oh, okay, so hold on. Dream says cat caboodle because of the cool title. Cool. I'll That's, take any. I'll take any, any reasoning is good reasoning. Dream. That's perfect. <laughs> Do rock paper scissors. Okay, Lee, yarn to go. I didn't read the one of them. Oh my god, I just realized I didn't read yarn to go. But I listened to your guys' talk about it. Um, okay. 
I voted above, but don't think you counted it. Okay. I voted the whole cat and caboodle. Let, Thank hold you. on. Let me double check. I don't want to double vote. Where did you vote? Did you vote way above? Okay. She voted way up there. So I didn't count yours yet. Thank you, Susan. Thank you, Susan, for pointing that out. Sped says cat caboodle. <laughs> cat caboodle. Oh, Breezy. Hi, Breezy. Breezy. Thank Yay. you. She said yarn to go. Oh, my gosh. Oh, I don't hear you. Okay, Storm, I need to see. I don't want to repeat votes, so I need to see where Storm voted. Um, I like both. I, vote for I don't think we got Storm's vote. Yeah, I started I started at, I, yeah, we didn't get Storm. So what did Storm, Storm says? Cat Caboodle, of course. Yeah, because I started at, um, we started at Cajun. So I didn't get that. Okay. Um. Janelle said, I didn't read either, but I'm a crocheter. So yarn to go. Okay. Janelle, I'm a crocheter too. Um, I was th this totally off subject, but I just want to fly it. I'm totally thinking about still to this day doing a um, hooked on books where we like do a night of like live, maybe like audio books, but like crocheting. I don't know. That sounds fun. I think you should do it. I keep thinking about it. Um, I'm not here. <laughs> We won't tell. Um, uh, you missed mine at the top. The, did you get mine the whole cat? That's I don't think so. People were talking voting early. Nope, I didn't get you either, Cheryl. I don't. I don't. I don't think so. Thank you, Cheryl. I love crochet too, but haven't done it in a while. Awesome. You should join us. I really think hooked on books. That would be so fun, right? Like we just kind of crochet and or knit whatever you want to do but and like listen chat about books whatever do some sprints is there, is there any other last minute vo votes i sort of any silent that. watchers um because then we'll give our vote yarn to go was the retreat, retreat one right yep I did read about 25% of that before I put it down for my reading slump and I was enjoying it. I did hear you guys talk about it, but I know my vote. Hi, I already voted. I just wanted to pop in. Okay, hi, Blake. Um, we're doing a different vote between whole cat and caboodle and yarn to go. But we got your vote for the original. Yes, for the one for tonight. Yeah. And then, yay. Oh, I'm also thinking of doing a, so they did this thing in the Malice convention that I just went to called um, Speed Dating, which is where oh, yeah. all the um, authors had, it was two different times and there were like 40 authors a piece and they had like one minute to talk about their newest book. But That's I so feel cool. like some of them are books that are already out. And so like, I don't know if I want to do a whole video on it, but I might do something like that. Hmm. I think you should do interested. Yeah. I think you should be, if you should call it something like um, one minute book review or one minute book interview or something. So like you just read like a quick thing. You don't have to do exactly like speed dating, but yeah, like a short. Yeah. It's just what I'm saying is some of the books are books we've maybe even already read. But see, my favorite thing is backlisted books too. So I don't need brand new or never been out. Um, but I thought about doing it. And then the other thing is, I don't think I would include the regular mystery writers. I think I would just include the cozies yeah. because I don't talk about regular mysteries or read. <laughs> yeah, was, yeah, that's funny. I forgot Malice is in all cozies. Okay, so all right, did you want to vote Blake for Whole Cat and Caboodle or Yarn to Go? You can just do it based on title if you didn't read both anything. <laughs> uh, I'll give you, I'll do my vote because you guys don't know the score yet. So my vote is for whole cat caboodle, not only because I really enjoyed it, but because based on the, the chat you guys had about yarn to go, I think I wouldn't have liked it as much as whole cat caboodle. So that's my vote. My and vote then, is also the whole cat and caboodle. Okay. Um, at this point, we don't need Blake's vote. The score, if I counted everybody's right, right. But even if I missed something, okay, Blake, we're at oh, 10, 10, 10 to four. So it's very, very, more, even if I missed one or two and accidentally like. Yeah, it's, it's very, very lopsided. Yeah. So 10 to four. So our winner is full cat and caboodle. So now that has to go against books can be deceiving. 
And for the ultimate cozy mystery knockout. Champion. Which Storm has the hardest decision to her favorite series. Oh my gosh, wow, now Storm. I want to know what she's voting. Storm, these are two of your favorite series. Wow, she lucked out on that. So, the whole cat and caboodle are facing uh, off mm -hmm. against Books Can Be Deceiving by Jen McKinley and this is for the ultimate cozy mystery knockout. <laughs> Lee, whatever is against Cat Kabul. She wants to go against the grade. She don't even care. <laughs> Storm said read? this is not fair. I'm so interested. Oh, in I know. Storm. You have the hardest thing. That'd be like asking me for the cupcake shop against uh, main clam bake. I'd be like, oh my God. Uh, Lee, didn't you read the books can be deceiving? Okay, hold on, guys. Please don't. Okay, hold on. Let me get okay, a piece of okay. paper. Okay, I'll, I'll start. So Blake said, <laughs> wait, on, I gotta write it down. hold on. Okay, no, it starts with Lee. Uh, Blake's was the old vote. So okay. Lee said, um, books can be deceiving. Hold on, I got to write it down. And then we have that again. Jason said, oh, cat and caboodle. caboodle. Hold on, cat caboodle. I didn't even write it down. Okay, so starting off, what do you say? So so Lee said books can be deceiving. Okay. Um, hold on. Um, Cajun said cat and caboodle. Okay. Hannah said cat and caboodle. Okay. Sophia said books can be deceiving. Okay. Um, Blake said books can be deceiving. Uh, Lee's already voted, but she said it. It's, yeah. Books can I be already, deceiving. I she loves that series. Did I count her? Yeah. yeah. Okay. She, you did. Okay. Um, Leanna said cat and caboodle. Okay. Cheryl said the whole cat and caboodle. I, <laughs> I figured that was the, um, the case. Um, Susan said books can be deceiving. Oh my God, this is a tight race, you guys. Breezy Ann said cat and caboodle. Okay. Um, Sped, you can vote on based on punny title. <laughs> Ooh. So Storm said, books can be deceiving because even though I love both, I love the characters more in books. That, that was my guess of what she would do. Um, I don't want to know what the race is when I vote. Well, no, I know what the numbers are when I vote. Blake's, or Blake's vote was for, um, oh, books can be deceiving. Yeah, well, I, I read it. Yeah, we no, she uh, up above, uh, Blake said cat and caboodle. That was for the last round. We got her vote for books can be deceiving. Well, you guys want to double check just because this is the final round. Let's start. Let me make sure I got my numbers right. Let's start again. So, it starts with Lee. Lee's the and she. Okay. That's when she says, okay. "I'm voting whatever is against." So um, let me. So I'm gonna be. I'm not gonna tell you how much is for. But I'm gonna go. So we got Lee. I'm getting back to it and then I'll help you. Just give me one sec. I'm trying to find it right now. Oh my gosh, I can't get back to it. Okay, I'm there. Are you, do you want me to start naming them? One, two, three. Okay, so I have five, I have five for books. That seems right. And so a cat and caboodle, I need to make sure I have five. So Cajun, one, two, three, four. Wait, do I have four? No, one, two, three, Four, five. Okay, so yeah, it's a tie vote. So me and you. Oh, I didn't want to. Sped, can you vote based on punny title, please? For any silent viewers, can you guys vote based on um, title, anything? I can't believe it's another freaking tie for me. Oh my gosh. I never read either, but books can be deceiving. Some. Okay, so got another that. Perfect, Janelle. Thank you. Um, books, thank you, Dream. Books can be deceiving. Okay. To make it interesting, I'm going to write down my vote and not tell you to after you vote. Do you know what you're voting for? Yes. I've read both of these.
then I'll tell you if like if, if, if it's tied, I don't want you to go one way or the other. Yeah, no, no, no. That's what I was saying. I don't want to know the votes yeah. when I vote because I don't want it okay. to be. So we're giving it till 5.05. If there's one more minute, if there's any more votes. This is nerve wracking. We need the Rocky theme song, like you said. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Sven might be busy at work. Okay, 5.05. Someone write down my vote. And now we got Tiffany's vote. What's your vote? I'll tell you mine after. You tell me yours. She said one minute. Okay. I know. And should we have to wait for a second? Hope everything's okay. Mm. It's exciting. So, how many of you guys have have any of you who started Uninvited Corpse? Or did you finish it? I'll be starting it next week. And did you guys like the knockout? I really liked it, but it was also too much because we had to start eight new series and I don't like starting that many series. So it was a lot of fun, but I wouldn't want to do the knockout again. Drum roll. All right, sorry about that. Okay, is everything okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, so, oh my gosh, I feel very, okay. Um, <laughs> I feel very torn too, I'm like Storm here. Yeah. Um, you, can, you, can, you can go through your thought process with us a little bit if you want. Because I'm curious what you think. Mm -hmm. No, no. What did you I vote? Did you like... did you vote for Books Can Be Deceiving to be the winner during that round? Yes. I don't remember. Okay. I my thing now is I feel like they were neck and neck in the way mm -hmm. I enjoyed them. Okay. I don't have a clear like. Oh, this one to me was more enjoyable, which is I, how I vote. Is right. and I def and, and I like, definitely and I have a clear, definitely clear, yeah. Um, enjoyment. Um. If you vote one way or the other, is it going to be a tie? Oh, there no. Could, okay. There could okay. be a tie. <laughs> okay. I'm. And then we're going to pick a number. If I guess if there's a tie, it's like a number, random number generator. Or we can have a dual winner. We could have a two place or something. Because if there's a tie, I think they both deserve to win. But if there can only be one, we okay. have to do something. Okay. I really, really enjoyed both. I know what I'm voting for. I'm voting for books can be deceiving because I loved both, but I felt like books can be deceiving had a little more already cozy feel to it in terms of the atmosphere and setting, which I think we'll get in the whole cult, cat and caboodle, but we didn't this time. And for cozies, I am much more, we've talked about this over and over. I'm much more character and setting driven. Yeah. And I felt like the library, I th it was just way more developed um, for right. me in terms of that. And that's the right. only reason. I I re actually really loved both of them. Right. And uh, my vote was for Cat and Caboodle. I did enjoy uh, Books Can Be Deceiving, but my issue with it was it was too many characters thrown at me that I didn't get to connect to them enough. But I think the series has great potential and I think I really will enjoy it. I felt like, I was invested in Cat and Caboodle more than I was invested in Books Can Be Deceiving, even though I enjoyed both. I think I gave both four stars. Or maybe I might have given Books Can Be Deceiving three. So based on that, we have a vote of eight to six, and the winner is Books Can Be Deceiving. I so. feel like we need like some sort of like we are the champion or something. <laughs> right? Like so oh. our knockout winner was the winner of our, our first um, – half of the round so it held its title it could have been dethroned right now and storm yes i agree i liked the knockouts i thought it was fun right but it was a lot of starting of new series um yeah. and I take think, away from like book club choices and stuff yeah and yeah it does it took away eight months worth of books that we could have chosen 
Uh, but there's a lot to choose from. But I like that we're, we're going to be doing the series read along. And I want to do that next year, too. Like maybe like a trilogy or another five book series. I think that's what we should focus on. And we could have occasional buddy reads, but we don't have to do two, three series every month. Yeah. Yeah. So, so or in maybe August, one month, put two together or something. So in August, we're going to be doing the regular book club, which we'll do every month. There'll be one book club book, of course. But we're not going to do knockouts, at least for a while. Maybe we'll do them again, but I agree with everybody else. And the other thing with knockouts, I enjoyed them, but again, I don't know if I want to dissect my books as much as the knockouts make you do. I feel yeah. like I feel like it takes a little bit of the enjoyment and the magic yeah. out of cozies. Um, yeah. when I think about them too analytically, yeah, they're supposed to be fl uh, fluff. They're supposed to be just fun, and I feel like it just kind of makes it too analytical and like clinical. Yeah, um, for me. Personally, I want an enjoyment rating. I don't want a critical rating either. That's why I was like, I was so excited to talk about these, but I didn't want to pick the books apart either. So, um, but so the other thing we're doing in August is we're going to start a series read along. So, okay. so we're going, so it'd only be two books a month. One, the book club, which August book club is arsenic and adobo. I'm so excited about it. And that's and your then, yeah. um. And then we're also going to do a series realign. So what we mean is we're going to read one book a month of the Tina Cashian's Kitchen Kebab. She was another author at Malice. Oh, who, cool. All of them were friend, were great and friendly. Like they were like chatting it up with everybody. Just yeah, like, like fan friends. Just, yeah. It was like all of us fans are like fangirling out and they're just talking to you. Like, you know, it was really nice to see. I didn't feel like anybody was standoffish, anything like that. But Tina Cashian was there too. Um, and so we're going to read one book of hers a month. She's got five in her series, which means we'll end in December. And her fifth book is a Christmas book. So it's perfect timing. Perfect. And the, the um, series read along is optional, but so you can do one or the other. Uh, but I hope that, I hope that you guys stick through the whole series. Like let's say you get to book three and you're like, eh, it's okay. Try to stick it out for four and five to see if you change your mind by the end. Because I'd love for all of us to get to the end together and not for some of us to DNF it. But if you want to DNF it, you can. Um, I think it like so I cool. know. And, sorry, I don't. I didn't want to interrupt yeah. you. I just wanted to say goodbye to Najat. She said it's three. They they said it's uh -huh. three a.m. I just want to say to you, like, I I, I go to bed. Like, thank yeah. you, thank you, thank you, thank. I only say that. I'm just joking with you. But I'm like, dude, I wouldn't. Wow, thank you. Yeah, um, and at some point I'm not, I'm like, I don't have any, um, interviews scheduled for a while. Cause I've stopped kind of even contacting for right now, just as a break to myself. Cause you, I don't know how you much. feel about time, but on those dates I don't have, we could even make things earlier than 5 PM. The reason I was yeah. doing 5 PM is because I had interviews at like 2 PM. Right. right. I'm just throwing it out there. Um, and there might be some weeks I can't because I do have author interviews, but at this point I haven't contacted any new authors for interviews. I just needed a break. I love doing them, but it was just too much in one day for a while. And I felt like I did right. a the, bunch in a row. So the thing is, um, during the weekends, the earliest I could go would probably be 3 PM your time, but yeah, we could do that sometimes. I just don't want to get people confused either. That are all yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just throwing it out there. Cause I know like, yeah. In this case, like, you know, for, for, um, Najat and, and Sophia and just, you know, yeah. um, and during the weekdays I could go like early morning in my time. <laughs> see, I definitely can't during the weekdays, exactly. but, but even like 3 PM, my time is still two hours earlier. Yeah. You yeah. Wait, we could, yeah. Yeah. We could do that here and there. Maybe not every week, but yeah. Right. Sure. Like today, um, I, I, today I kind of wanted to start earlier, but I didn't want to ask you cause it was already the day up. And I wouldn't have been able because I was at Malice most of the day. Yeah, exactly. so, you know. Um, all right. So I'm excited. I feel like for it was anticlimactic. Like we really need. We are the champions. Like right. yeah, we're deceiving. Um, like confetti. Like I don't know. Fireworks. Maybe something. It was like four months, but it was exciting. This is an exciting thing. Um, and the other thing is in August. And of course, everything is optional. Do I'm as like, much as you want to do as least like, as you want. Something else I don't know about. <laughs> yeah, you know about it. We're going to do the Willy Wonka. No, that's October. 
because of the candy. Yes. Okay. Never mind. <laughs> no, I thought it was August. No, Y'all because are confusing me. No, some people are doing Dune stuff. We're starting the series read. Oh, we're starting the series readathon, and people are like, "When do you want to do it?" And I'm like, "I already have uh, uh, like." And then we decided on October. We can go back. I, I can screenshot Discord. <laughs> I, I believe you. I just, storm I, thought I it didn't. was October. Yeah, the candy theme, Willy Walk. I'm like, let's do October and give people like, no, no. I said, I said, this is what I said. I said, guys, we have a readathon. We have the summer readathon going on right now. That's why our summer readathon ends in September. I'm like, let's do one readathon at a time. I don't want to do summer readathon and Willy Wonka readathon. So we have to do our official Discord readathon we've been doing. Is that good? Okay. Yeah, no, it's totally good. I just couldn't remember. Okay. So yeah, yeah, that's what it, it was. The candy thing, and it was after. Because I'm like, you guys, I'm like, are you bored of the summer readathon already? It hasn't even been a month. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's October. Yeah. 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 This, it's totally fun. I just, I, I yeah, I don't want to enjoy, um, break them down as much. Good night. Good night. I'm excited for the read along, me too. I'm excited for the read along because I've read. Some of that series, I'm going to reread it. And I, I, oh my gosh, I love what that series. I'm, what I'm really excited about is because the first books are normally set ups. I'm really excited to see how, what I take away from a series and what someone else takes away from a series. You know what I mean? Like that's what I'm really excited about because we're reading a series as a whole. So I want to see how I enjoy it compared to someone else. And that's really exciting. Is it, yeah. Absolutely, Lee. I love that. Yes. And those are 6 30 your time. Okay. And I am free Monday as of now. And I know that's late for you, Sophia, but I the only reason is because I by the time I get home from work, it has to be that way. Yeah. Um sorry, I know that's a bummer for for some people. Yay! Dream, I'm excited for the for the read along too. I really am. Is it? I forgot. I thought it was October. <laughs> Yeah, it's October. Because I was like, guys, we're in the middle of a readathon. You're ruining, you're stealing my thunder, as Monica was saying. Oh, yeah, no, no. We don't want to do that. It was just like, hey. Yeah. So I I said something like, let's do a Charlie and the Tech Factory um, readathon. And I didn't expect it actually to like, and it was when we were like making up prompts. And, it and was I great. And, there's a, it. and there's a Lee card said, and everything. Lee, me, Lee made a joke. She's like, She's like, it's just like us to take something too far. Because, like, we were just totally joking. We're like, yeah. it started out, we were like, hey, does anybody want to, I said that I might reread Little House on the Prairie. Yeah, I'm going to say that. kind of snowballed. And then I was like, we should do, because we were talking about, it. it's so funny. And I, like I said, Lee made the joke. She's like, it's just like us to take something and run and with it. And that's when I'm and, like, guys, we're already in a readathon. Let's do it after. <laughs> yeah, it was totally like a, yeah. Thank you, Cajun. Uh, th thank you. Are, are we making and... our old? Are we making our own Golden Girls thing? No. We're doing the original, the one that already happened. Oh, I don't know. Is there another Golden Girls thing? I wasn't. They're, they're, they just someone just had a Golden Girls refund. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I think there's another like part of another, it. Another another round or something. So we're talking about the um, Tina. Cashian Kitchen Kebab series. We're going to start it in August. It's a five book series. So each month we're going to read one book. So it'll finish the entire series in December. And that is a Christmas book. The first book's called Hummus and Homicide. It, it will replace our knockout. So we'll be talking about the third Saturday of every month. So you need to read by the third Saturday in August. And, and then, then Susan's yeah. talking about, so next weekend, Uninvited Corpse. Yes. So yes. to finish off July, we have um, Uninvited Corpse on the 24th. Since there are five weekends, I, we might take a break on the 31st. We don't know yet. I think we said we were, but who knows? We might change our mind. Um, um, and, and then Hummus and Homicide will be in August. The third week of August and the fourth week of August will be Arsenic and Adobo. All the info will so be on this. Arsenic and Adobo? <laughs> I know. Hope you're not let down. Um, all the info will be on Discord too. Yes, 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 yes. So third, so like she said, the, the third week in August. 
Um, I have to work Monday until 8 p.m., so I'll watch it after. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha, Hannah. Um, oh, time isn't a problem. Honestly, the lives are great. Something to look forward to. You should think about joining us. You were so much fun, Sophia. Maybe if you join us, then you would stay awake because, you know, you're on screen. Uh -huh. I think there's another round. Okay. That makes sense. But then she goes down. She goes, she met Murder, she wrote. Oh, because Storm had the idea a while back of a Murder, she wrote readathon. And I'm like, that is brilliant. I love that idea. Okay, and then, that, that has to be in November or December. Um. I just watched the whole Little House series for the first time. I had never seen it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 Storm had that idea originally, and I think it's amazing. Yeah. But I think we need to wait. For yeah. But well, yes, and, yes, yes, yes. Uh, 2022, we're having a year-round readathon. Doesn't mean we can have little ones, but we're doing the alphabet one for anybody that wants to participate in the Discord. So nuts all year for 26 books was there a shorter round for golden girls like weekend or something maybe storm i, know, I think that there's perfect. another month that does something with the golden girls yeah. same people doing it but it's like a little bit thing that's coming up personally i don't like readathons that are a weekend or a week long i like month long ones a week is okay but a weekend's like way too fast <laughs> Yeah, maybe in maybe in January. So I totally want to do it. I mean, I really think that's a great readathon. Um, it's more about taking on too much. <laughs> I think it should be February because, like, like murder. She wrote like instead of celebrating love, we celebrate murder. <laughs> so, because um, January we start in the alphabet one for anybody wants to. Do. So yeah, yeah. wrapping up. So you guys ready to wrap up for the night? Yeah. So just to recap, Uninvited Corpse next Saturday. 4 p.m. Eastern 4 Standard Time. 4. Oh, oh yeah, Cheryl. So, I, I don't want to do so a week, fun. a weekend or a week. I'd rather do one. <laughs> and this was so much fun. I had a ball. I'm happy to see new people. Um, if you're intense. new here, subscribe to my channel. It's all about cozy mysteries and romance. If you're new here, Join our Discord. It's all about cozy mysteries. Somebody's always on there chatting it up. Sped, please don't rip, rip apart my cozy <laughs> mysteries. But other than that, we loved having you. Yeah, I'm going to be sending him an invite for there. Uh, and if this was someone's first time watching and you were shocked at murder of the PTA, that's not a typical cozy. <laughs> Abs that's a very, very good point. <laughs> if this was your first, you know, like, foray. You're like, I don't want that genre. No, it's not. <laughs> don't even... Don't even pay it any mind. Exactly. I'll talk to you in like five minutes in the Discord, Lee. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Have a great night. See y'all later next See week. Monday. If you Monday, 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 Monday. 630 right. Eastern Standard Time. Right here. All right. Bye, It everyone. will be more um, like sprints. intense reading sprints Just rather, than, rather than All. chatting it up. All right. Yeah. Bye, everyone. Bye.